conservation district order which we have a quorum present um, and to address some old new business uh, let's discuss uh, 27 Dustin Road um, I believe the residents here do you want to you received the letter I there was a site visit on Sunday uh, I stopped by um, did you take a look at the letter um, and do you have any questions about it <coughs> yeah, I read it. Um, I mean, I just moved it here. I had no idea of it. Uh, couldn't show the land, and that wasn't what I was. I wasn't actually showing the land. I know now that I look at it. I did uh, some of the uh, dirt that I put in the mulch. Was it in here on town property? Was it? Should I move that over to my property? Is that okay? Well, let, well, let's see. <coughs> let's get let's get it straight. So, was it dirt and mulch, or was it? I mean, yeah, the ground's frozen. There was a little bit of snow cover, by. so I couldn't entirely see the whole affected area on the plan that was squiggled kind of on the plan. Yeah, it was just like dirt slash mulch, kind of all the same color, though, <coughs> kind of trying to beautify the property because I threw a media spot in that, and I just moved in, so I, I wanted to make it look nice because the land was really low right there, so I thought yeah. I'd put a lean in around the trees made it look nicer. Yeah. Of course, then I guess I can't do that. I, I just moved here. I had no idea. Okay. Um, did you take a look at the s all of the circled areas on the map that were was in the handout? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you able to, uh, maybe when the weather thaws, are you able to do something about those fill piles, um, getting um, some of them removed, hauled out to compost? and. They must be from the other people on the street. They probably take their yard waste, and that can has nothing to do with me. Can I ask you to pull out the plan, and so we can talk about exactly what? Oh, I don't have it with me. Oh, you don't. Okay. Um, okay. Chuck, you have one. Thanks. Right here. Um, I mean, I, if you want, I can move it over. So, so is that the problem that it's on the town property? Um, well, so the real issue is it's um, fill within, you know, the jurisdictional area of a wetland, which is why we have a say over it. Um, by law, the Conservation Commission has jurisdiction over land use within 100 feet of a wetland or 200 feet of a river um, okay. or, you know annual stream. Oh, I didn't, I didn't know because uh, I didn't know it was a wetland tonight yet. Yeah, if you, um, if you, if you, well, uh, I mean, you know it's wet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. But I didn't know, <coughs> I didn't know that you guys didn't want me to do that. I wasn't, it's not like I'm taking away the water that's there. I wasn't trying to, I mean, I was just making the trees look nice around the trees I put in the dirt. Right. Mulch. Right. Um, we're going to need that whatever fill was at. I mean, are, if you're talking about a surface mulch of, you know, landscaping mulch, <coughs> I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to speak for myself. I, I don't see around, around in a isolated area around trees for simply landscaping purposes. And if it's contained to that, I, I don't, I myself don't take big issue with that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, especially if we're talking about, you know, an inch of mulch around a tree. Um, but if we're talking about filling in land, and if we're talking about dumping leaf waste well, and yard intention. waste, but <coughs> I, I just want to be clear so that you do understand. Yeah, you know, well, I understand. Uh, so. But this stuff here, um, yeah, I have nothing to do with that. I mean, that, was, that was me. I've only been here a month. I moved in in December. Yeah. So that's been there for a while. Yeah, I could see, I could see how that could be from a previous landowner, but it is on your property, and it is some fill that we've noticed. Yeah. So um, we're encouraging people who live next to these wetlands to start considering this land as, you know, something that you could be a steward of, um, and we'd like to work with you to teach you, you know, if you don't know already, some good management practices. Um, and the good management practices to keep this wetland healthy and functioning um, is to 
keep any additional leaves out, any additional brush out. I mean, what falls in the forest, a lot of people say, well, why, why can't I just dump leaves here and stuff? You know, it's a forest. It's, but, and forests kind of have a natural balance of their own. Um, and creatures can survive in that habitat. But when you add more leaf material, more branches, and another, you know, and then someone else drags right. over another five yards yeah, of more, and then another 10 no, yards no, 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 for the next year, you know, it becomes not a forest really right. anymore, you know, so it, it kind of, okay. you know, um, and it's not functioning as an adequate habitat for the wetlands. So, so, um, so uh, any comments or any other comments from commission members? I feel like I've been so talking quite a bit here. Low depression, and that maybe in the spring that's filled with water, not as landscaping. So I don't, it doesn't sound like you saw um, what I saw, because there's maybe not. significant fill in a low spot in front of the trees that extends out into the the um, kind of like the access area, um, which is which is fine. And I think the reason why you got a letter is because. Uh, when I talked to your neighbor, he said that you are a new homeowner, and, and it's better to just get you to be aware of what's going on. So that whole area, that side of your yard, probably up to the house, would be within the 100-foot buffer zone. So anything on that side of your house, you really can't fill in that wetland, um, pull up the trees next to it, or the brush, or start mowing right up to it um, in that area. And as far as filling this... Uh, section that's next to the street which on town land and next to the um, those three pine trees which was a depression I mean that must that must fill up with water in the spring and I think um, just beyond that uh, road access where we have the water on one side and on the other and someone filled that in so they could get across to dump their leaves I mean that that needs to be cleaned out that I don't know who's going to do that I'm not saying that these gentlemen are going to do that but we're just just disturbing what's happening up there now. Yeah. I mean, it's supposed to have an open channel. Because I saw a lady walk down with her pet and like go up all the way to the railroad tracks. Right. So that ain't his fault. Like from being a previous whoever he bought the house from. Right. They, the two neighbors on the end of the road because of its dead end. Yeah. They could have been doing that for years. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I don't think it's fair for him to be able to clean everything. What he put down, he should take care of. Without a doubt, but to clean everyone else's yard waste and stuff. I don't well, think no, I. They've, they've, probably, they've, probably, they've all lived there a lot longer than me. I had no idea. I haven't even been around for a fall yet and dumped any leaves over there. Yeah, you you know um, you know I understand where you're coming from. You you're new to this property. You didn't directly do this. Um, you being at the end of the street kind of makes you, if you're home and if you if you see it, kind of makes you a little bit of a gatekeeper. Right. Um, you know, it's. I think it's town land. I think it's the town right of way, and um, you know, we could. I think we've had. I think Chuck, you had a discussion well, it's with town land. And it's the Jameson property also that it's extends behind your neighbor's house. So uh, there's at least three or four people that have land in that small area. Right. So. You know, we we bring this up because it's an issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, we would, we would, l in a perfect world, it would be great if everyone who really was responsible would step up and take their share of, <coughs> of, right. of responsibility for it and taking care of it and getting it back out of there. Um, I don't think that's going to happen tonight, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, but, but if you can, um, you know, if, if we can get some, can, some word out to the neighbors, we have sent letters to neighbors. Typically, um, well, often, not all, not all the time, but often, we don't get a big response from the neighbors directly from letters. Um, you know, so calling people in and talking to them face to face seems to get the word out that it's it's something we're concerned about, we'd like to see made better. I am a little concerned. I mean, this past month we got a lot of rain in like three days, we got like three inches of rain. 
Right. And, uh, I was, it was very concerning to see all that water so close to my house because all the water from right. the street runs right into there. Right, and the, and the more this fill is taken out, the better that drainage channel is going to work. There is no, there's no, I mean, it just drains all into my property. Right, you're, you're right. I've, I know this street, it's very, very flat. Um, and as you can see, so here's this drainage channel. This drains this way, I believe. Um, and then there's a culvert, there's a culvert here. And it, this drains to here. And this goes to an enormous wetlands near, um, right next to Austin Preparatory School. So you're saying, okay, so, so because of the yard waste here, the it could water be, water isn't draining. That could be part of what's going on there. It's, it this, was, this is an open channel, so if you're getting, this is your house, if you're getting runoff here, it's not able to come down into this wetland, so it's backing up into your house. See, when I, when I, yeah, it, I mean, it was all the way up, it was really close. Yeah. So to keeping that channel open is is helping is helping your situation. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to drain quickly next time if that channel were open because that's all very very flat back there. And the times you'll get quick drainage is when you have a slope. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, the so whole street, so just, it's sloping all towards my street. And it the is. Train tracks is a hill. Right. All the water comes out. Like right. That. Right. But like I said, there is a culvert. A pipe that connects this okay, right. to underneath the railroad. Okay. I've looked through it. So, um, so you know, obviously the ground is frozen. Um, you know, we're not going to get to um, getting that fill out. If it would be great to revisit this, it would be great to. Um, I don't know. If, if you can convince any neighbors that you have that, that you know what, making this better, help making this better really improves everyone's drainage in that area. Um, so I don't know if you can build any consensus in your neighborhood. So we We've, could put this on the agenda for the spring. And yeah, I think so. And uh, invite 24 Dustin Road in also. Yep. Which is the neighbor on the other side. Yep. Across, yeah. Yep. And... Um, and you guys can take that meeting date and talk to your other neighbors and say, why don't you come in and talk yeah. with us all about it so we can get definitely. a good plan definitely together. Oh, there's definitely yeah. someone on your road that doesn't want it to happen. Yeah. Um, so there'll be three. I, I understand completely. I do tree work for a living. So that's yeah. why I came here. Yeah. Because I understand it and not for nothing. I can understand like the fill right near the house where the pink is uh, labeled as a uh, <laughs> but 26 on the river, I, I have no idea. You know what I mean? Right. It wasn't cleaned out correctly right. for the drainage. So right. I um, just feel it all falling, happening too fast. Like in the spring, I'll help them clean it all out. But before mean? the clean out actually happens, we, we should talk about how that's going to happen and who's going to be involved. And, you know, because if we just go in and disturb all of that, we might just um, put some stuff into the stream that we don't need to. Um, that makes it all muddy and makes it, and creates a situation that we don't want to have. Okay, so it's like a <laughs> right, right. So um, if it's all right with you guys, we'll just <coughs> discuss it a little bit further. Um, and any questions from the commission? Comments? No. Any questions or comments from the public about this matter? Okay. Hearing none, um, we'll postpone this to. Let's, let's see. We have an agenda. Sorry, I'm gonna I'm gonna look for my calendar date list. Here it is. Um, you want to say I don't know, April eighth, or I'm not gonna be here on the twenty second of April. So, what do you think, Chuck? April. April eighth is good. April eighth. Okay. April 8th at seven. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you. So is that much. doable? Thanks. Yeah. All right. Thanks well, for coming in. Up, what uh, what day is that for? That's a it's Wednesday. a Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you guys. All right, thanks. Appreciate Have it. a good night. Okay. Mr. Zamboris? Yes. Um, Can you make a motion to continue this until sure. April 8th? I move we continue 27. 
It was a. It's an old new business. It's enforcement. Enforcement. Oh, well, no, it's a. Re it's a request letter, but just. Okay, I move we continue 27 Dustin to uh, April 8th. Yes, sir. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed, none. Abstain, none. Okay, um, I should probably read the script to reopen this officially. What do you say? Go right in. All right. I know this is going to be the first time you've heard this. Um, you are right <laughs> All right, all right. Um, where do I have it? I have it right here. Um, the... Uh, this is now the 705 public hearing for DEP number 270-00634, I think. Is that that's what I have in my... That's what's on the agenda. That's what's on the agenda. Let's do that. Um, uh, Pine Sturgis Park, Pine Ridge Road, Map 4, Lot 88, Town of Reading, Engineering, DPW, <coughs> Engineering Department. This is now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. Uh, the applicant will present the proposal. The commission will <coughs> receive reports. Um, the commission will address questions to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Um, please sign in if you haven't already at the attendance sheet at the door. And at this time, would the Conservation Commission please introduce themselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Uh, Allison Steger. Terry Selling. Rebecca Long. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Nick Scanlon, <laughs> Chair. Rebecca Long. Okay. For the, for the record, George Zamboris, Town Engineer. Welcome, Mr. Zamboris. Madam Chair, this will be very quick. Uh, I don't have Go anything for it. Just really a quick update uh, this evening, primarily because um, the uh, wetland specialist hasn't completed the, uh, veg the uh, planting plan, and I didn't want to just give you piecemeal of information. So okay. we will have a uh, comprehensive plan to uh, plan to submit to you itemizing all the restoration areas of the bank and everything. I, I do want to say, though, that I did go down and look at some of the other areas that the commission uh, spoke about uh, <coughs> last meeting. And there are other areas, especially near the spillway and possibly connecting some of the dots. So okay. uh, we will be doing a little bit more work than we initially anticipated. But the next meeting, uh, every I should have that uh, planting plan and be able to give you a nice comprehensive uh, project with what we intend to do that now. Okay, great. So it it seems like no new information at this point, no, but I mean, um, planting I mean, plans talk coming. About, uh, uh, restore, uh, repairing the bank by the downstream of the concrete wing, wing walls so by the spillway. That does have to be done. Uh, actually, the far side of the wing wall is collapsing. I want to stand it up because we're going to be working there. And uh, for the most part, there we we had the uh, the large washout, the yeah. curb all yeah. the way down towards uh, where it was break up. We're really going to connect the dots and, and repair all of that. Yeah. And there's probably about flight. <clears throat> that area there will have to do the bottom stabilization and the top planting, and then about 40 feet downstream from that, we'll just have to uh, top dress the planting. The bank on the far side, uh, it is fairly vertical. Uh, it's it, there's not a lot of vegetation there on the opposite side of the stream, um, but it, it seems to be stable. And I'm not sure. I'm sure there's some other vegetation, just that it's not visible right now. Uh, weather but I, I I don't want to touch it it seems like it's keeping itself keeping its own so we'll, we'll let that side be in and if that something happens in future years then we'll address that at another time okay but it's as I said it's probably about now uh, 10 feet downstream of the of those wing walls and about a 130 foot area that we have to do bottom and top yeah that's I mean, a lot and, and there's about a 70 foot gap in between that vegetation seems fairly good and everything don't want to touch it okay so that's what the project will encompass now okay um any questions or comments from the commission i was wondering about the drainage pipe we're talking about maybe cutting it back we're going to cut the back yeah that was suggested to cut that back we'll cut that back too okay. I, I think the normal width of the channel is approximately eight feet uh, where it's blown out yeah. now it's in excess of 12 feet yeah. so we'll, we'll yeah. trim that back yeah. and we'll leave the 12 foot width whatever's there any other questions for me? Were you going to do some velocity calculations? Yep. So that you present yeah, All that will be, I, I didn't want to give you a piece here and a piece yep. there, so I think just the whole package yes, together, please. it's a lot easier to. It's easier to, to review that way yes, too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, I had a question. I was on. I went for site we'll visits. Well, I saw. I just want to. I just want to bring it up to the commission and the public in general that I was there um, Sunday morning. Um, it seems, and I don't know if it's just my perception or my memory, but it seems to me the flooded skating areas seem uh, higher elevation than they were last year. No, it's that's that's well, it. The reason why they're higher now than what they were last year is because we were constantly losing water last year. This is what the normal elevation is. Oh, okay. With that um, skating uh, uh, skating surface level, it looks like there's in the area where you did the the digging to see where the bank blowout had mm -hmm. happened. It looked to me like there was maybe three feet between the edge of ice and the edge of bank. Oh. And in my mind, I just thought... There was more. What, 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 what happened in the bank there is you have the, uh, starting from the water level, the bank comes up at a reasonable sl slope. Then yeah. there's about a foot and a half step, and then it comes back up again. So that top portion of the bank is gone. Yeah. And yeah. that's something we'll reshape when we get through there. It was... And it if was, we have to, we'll just make it a little wider refilling into the wheel of the areas. Just to tell you what I was thinking when I saw it, what I, I was thinking... <coughs> Wait, the subsurface was disturbed here because that's where you did the excavations. Um, you didn't find, so that was, the, the subsurface had a little bit of disturbance. Um, I doubt you packed it back in when you backfilled. You know, so, and a piece of me thought, if there's more volume water here, we might have, we might be looking at a, a weakened area because of the previous excavation Maybe we should put those sandbags along the bank just before the spring melt. We can do that. Just so we don't see yeah, a, an emergency it's, repeat. It's possibly weak, and the other thing, too, is um, uh, I think when the backhoe was uh, walking around the edge, at one time the track was right at the top of the bank, and they did have to, it did set a little bit. They did have to put some soil back up there. They just didn't put it back up high enough. Right. But that could have compacted some of the yeah. fill, and, yes, also, and, and that could have solved the yep. washout, the underground. But we'll do that before the spring. Wash out. All right. As I'm not an engineer, I'm just asking the question. Okay. All right. Any other questions from the commission? Any questions from the public at this point? No. Well, then, uh, what date should we? Um, would you like I, to continue this to? I plan for the next meeting. Twenty eighth. Yeah, we should have everything for that. All right. Well, then. Uh, all right. So that's the January twenty eighth. Okay. Thank you. We motion to continue this till the 28th. Make a motion to continue um, Sturgis Park until January 28th. All second. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? None. Abstain? None. Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. Um, okay. Let's take up the request for determination of applicability for 115 Forest Street. Um, Mr. William Alley, welcome hey, back. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, hi, how are you tonight? Yeah, I'm doing well. Great. For this. So I asked Jack Sullivan yes. to do additional work for me. Yes. And I think you all have a copy of the new plan. Yep. And Hold on a second. We'll put in okay. the, as you can see, the fields of hay along the
in the front of the house and any pickup trucks, and there'll be nothing uh, in the buffer zone at all. Okay. Uh, and I, you know, as I said, I'll be over there to make sure the yard and that we don't have any debris going into Daily. the wetlands. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, also that the street is clean. But yep. these contractors are very reputable. Yeah, and that's going to be a busy street. It's going to be a tight project. Well, I do know the neighbor to the left. You do? So he'll let me park there. Oh, that's helpful. Because it is tight. Yep. Uh, but I think the other thing I pointed out here, we can put the dumpster on either the concrete or the driveway so we don't get anything into the soil. Not that there's usually leakage, but just to protect ourselves. Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, I'm certainly happy to ask for any plans. I still do not even have, uh, you know, I'm just looking for this approval, then I'll go forward. I am getting a little bit better number mm -hmm. on going forward with the project. Okay. And, uh, okay. Um, Yep, I did do a site visit on Sunday morning, um, which was great because I hadn't seen this <laughs> place. I, I always need to get yeah. out there and see it myself. Um, I didn't realize from the plan um, how tight that back corner around the right side is, um, but I, I'm glad to see the, uh, because the, I saw the existing silt fence there. Right. And um, so I'm glad to see the proposed staked straw wattle. Um, okay. Where, where it's placed. I think that makes a lot of sense. It's, it's protecting uh, the drainage, the low ditch to the right, right. just on the neighbors, and, um, and it's gonna capture um, any sort of runoff or any erosion or any, anything like that if, if it happens to exist. Now, the um, quick question, something I observed while I was there. As you walk around, I don't know if, um, yeah. as you walk around to this back corner, right. um, there is kind of a, a, a little bit of a pit, uh, 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 a pit right on the corner that that's somebody... The builder did that, uh, working with Nancy Toomey to okay. check out for footings, and she, oh. uh, they also work with uh, structural engineer Dan Webb. Mm -hmm. sure to get a that. sense of... Uh, because we obviously want to make sure I can uphold the second floor. Okay, so that was just an exploration just to... Yeah, I mean, okay. we can make sure it gets okay. refilled. I mean, I saw somebody put a trash can in it to prevent people from, like okay. there's a plastic yeah. can in it. I'm sure to keep people from falling right. in or. Yeah. I, okay. That's all that is there. Okay. There's actually a hole in the basement too to check for footings also. Oh. All right. Um, any, at this point, any questions from the commission members? I just wonder when you said in number seven that the trees would be in the back would be protected if necessary. What, what? Uh, well, I don't, I don't think at this point we need to wrap them or anything because we're not going to be having right. machines back there. Because you say there's no trucks or dumpsters in the back there. Will not. There, was, there was a mention about that you are concerned if there was a truck to protect it, but we're right. seeing nothing going back there. I don't think we need, you know. But if for some reason something wanted them to protect it, I'll right. protect them. Right. You know what I mean? So. I don't remember seeing a lot of uh, low overhanging limbs out there. I don't. I'm Not just. I don't house. think any. Well, there's this tree in the front um, next to the driveway. It says it's 24 inch. That one should be protected. That's going to be the construction entrance. We remove the one on the other side. The and then 30 inch. Anything else that's in a construction area might want to be protected. That's a street tree. It's the left hand side, right of the driveway. The 24 here. inch one. Yep. And what, what about? This one over here. Only if you're going to be working in that area, I would be okay. concerned about those. I mean, the only place that I can see the dumps is either just the driveway and then, you know, where they have the concrete pavement now, whatever is suitable for their pickup trucks or, but I, I don't see any reason we need to go on the existing lawn or anything like that. I mean, I know it is tight, plus I think, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that neighbor who I've got to know will allow us to put a couple, you know, a pickup truck or so there. Yes. It really shouldn't take, I don't have an exact number of days, but uh, I would say it's not, it's amazing how much they can take down quickly. Demolishing's easy. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Goes quick. But even by hand, it amazes me. Yeah, you know, they, yeah. They bring, a, a, you know, four or five, six guys there. Yeah. Now, um, now is, can, I don't know, um, just a question. Is, is this in an aquifer protection district area where we have impervious cover limits? I don't think so. 
I don't I don't think I don't think it is because yeah, I think then it's, it's below that. Okay. All right. Um because we did uh course course uh yeah. the thune Yep. And that yep. one. Yeah. Um so um at this point are there any questions from the public? Or sorry, Chuck. No. All right, Chuck. Just just one more thing, Bill. Um the straw wattle is not gonna work for your erosion control, so you're gonna have to grab um silt, uh, not silt, but um, silt fence and straw bale, at least for the side of the house and then in back of the house. Beyond that, you can use your straw wattle, but that... So that what's the proper term, straw bale? Um, straw bale, yeah. yeah. Okay. Or straw, hay bale, salt okay. wash, hay bale, you can, any of that stuff, but not just regular hay. It's too close to the resource area and then the silt fence which you already have make sure that's installed correctly and if you want to come out to verify it's, it's installed correctly. there will be a pre-activity meeting we'll check a bunch of things um, and proper installation of the erosion control will be one of them so okay. Um, okay. when that's installed correctly just give me a call I need uh, at least two days that's fine I mean I'm still uh, you know I still need to go through the uh, you know budget Okay. Doing my preliminary work right now. All right. Um, just so you know, one of the things, if one of those trees within the hundred foot buffer zone, the hundred foot BVW line here, right. if if one of the trees does get taken down within the hundred feet, we we typically ask that you know a replacement tree be planted. Okay. Yeah, I dealt with that in Wake Town. So that we don't you know lose. That's fine. Trees into. Unfortunately, there's a curve cut. Well, you know, this one's outside of the hundred foot. Okay. To be honest with you, I want to work well with the town. If, if it's it's pretty incidental, if you'd like another tree, anyways, even if it's outside. I'm, I'm okay. Open, I'm open okay. To, All right. You know, I think the, my only possible issue is if I put up a beautiful home, I want it to be somewhat visible. Right. So. Right. You know. Okay. Uh, but uh, I can. Um, um, at this point, um, any other questions from the commission? None? Hearing none? Um, at this point, I, I'm prepared to vote on a negative determination. But I'm, um, is there a motion? Okay, I'll make the motion, I guess. <laughs> I move we issue a negative determination of applicability uh, with um, conditions stipulating um, appropriate you know, means and method construction. We have some boilerplate, some standard construction methods that um, we ask for. Um, you know, but, but <coughs> this, this list here seems to cover most of the basics for that. So um, we'll have to draft, unless Chuck, have you drafted up a I do. Oh, you I do have, have a negative determination. Um, okay. I could uh, add uh, the means and method plan and a construction schedule, but I think actually the construction schedule is already in here. Oh, okay, and this is? And I'm gonna, I can add that as an appendix. Okay, okay. I'll second all of that. Okay. Um, all those in favor of I issuing a negative determination? Opposed? None. Okay. So that's a good thing for you. A negative determination is good. I don't know if you knew that. Um, this. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, it's the only negative thing that happens on this yeah. project. Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what that what that means is that you don't have to refile under another permit. Okay. Um, so we are saying no. You don't have to refile under another permit. For me, in my opinion, this one was right on it was kind of on the edge because it's um i think if you were digging up the foundation uh -huh. and actually excavating uh -huh. i would have liked to see this under notice of intent uh, filing uh, Chuck mentioned that and, uh, so i appreciate you know working together and as far as i know we we'll definitely want to keep the foundation okay and so if anything changes you know or absolutely please let us know and uh we'll we'll handle that as it comes along so okay, Thank you very okay. Much.
Thank you. Chuck, is there two copies or no? You just One. went to the first yeah. page. Okay. Yeah, I can pick that up here. And then we're yeah, done. Yeah, Next Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Do we have to close that procedurally, Chuck? Do we have to close it? Yeah. Yeah. But we don't have. Well, we're signing it, so we should close it. Close it. You can. You can make a motion to issue it under N three, and then you can make a motion to close. Well, we we already voted to issue, so why don't we? Yeah. So uh, I move we close this request for determination of applicability fourteen dash eighteen. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Great. You going faster? All right. <laughs> okay, I'll start. Um, okay, let's uh, discuss the request for determination of applicability 14 19, Zero Birch Meadow Drive. So, this is not, that's been closed. This is only a discussion of the planting plan. Okay, that's uh, closed and issued. Morton Field, that was closed. Okay. So, the planting plan. Um, did commission members have a chance to take a look at that email? It looks like they want to plant arborvitae, um, plant eight of eight arborvitae. They're going to be planting 15 arborvitae, and there's a eight allowance a for a 10 foot wide by 160 foot long no mow zone. And it's shown on the plan. So it seems it seems like that's above and beyond. Is that, I'm trying to, so the no-mo zone is Jamie above. Jamie asked for 20 plants, and there yeah. was little discussion and no conclusion on the no-mo zone, but that was thrown in, um, and the hope is that volunteer vegetation will grow in that area, and uh, the roughage would probably keep a few balls or whatnot out of the, out of the stream. Okay. So if you want to cut back on the abravite, I know that we were, according to, um, and I always forget his name, uh, our town uh, tree warden. Um, Bob Keating. Say, Keating. Bob He's, Keating. Um, he says we're right at about $400 with, with these abravite. Yeah. So yeah. less would would take us under that number yeah and that's but but let me understand it sounds like this plan is saying those 15 arborvitae will become sort of a um outer edge in other words sort of a living fence line this, for a no mow zone no it, there's a planting area where they're going to go okay where these arborvitae yeah. go yeah. and then there would be no planting other than in the planting area according to this plan so how is the no mow zone no going to be demarked? No mow zone establish itself by not mowing it, and it becomes rough. Okay. So, which means somehow marking Bob it Keating out. Bob said we'll mark it off once. The same guy mows the lawn as every year for until he retires, and he'll once that's established, it won't be an issue. Okay. Okay. I just so want to make sure that communication yeah. happens because that seems to be a tripping. A stumbling point well, in, I, in I did town. take the time to talk to Bob about yeah. that, and he, ha it, whatever we agree on, he will do his best to make sure it happens. Great. Great. Okay. Um, any questions? Or I have some questions. Um, Crystal Lee. The, the is it a tree warden? Or the tree warden, the town the tree, tree warden. warden. Yeah, so did the tree warden make any suggestions of um, spacing? Is it in a line? Is it offset? I know there's, it's eight feet by 45 feet, so if it was just in a line, wouldn't it be every three feet for 15? Right, I think we have professional help to, uh, to plant this. I think someone's volunteered who's, an, who's um, a landscaper who's going to uh, set up the arborvitae in that area. So I'm, I think that's gonna be done right. Do you know how big the arborvitae plants are? Well, I mean, they come in all sizes. I, I know, you know so I mean, that's the question. Yeah. So, you know, the question becomes, I'm sure you can appreciate that, you know, the project started at 25,000, so and it's all volunteer gifting that's going on. So um, if we were to buy a large one, we would spend $200 a piece for that. That is not the likely plan. Because the goal <coughs> is to, you know, plant something, I'm going to guess, 
obvious would be much more expensive as well. So trying to balance the request of the, com of the commission with, you know, some, you know, yeah. with some financial relief as possible for the nonprofit that is gifting this to the town. So that being said, that's a very long answer to what I believe we're going to be able to and a half or two of these calls. I, I have, um, there is a, a local resident who has a landscape company who does this, who is obviously, yeah. happen to know these plants are provided because he planted some in my yard. They're popular around town. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So yep. because they're, they're fast growing and they yep. fill in. And so that was the other thing is that, you know, he's gonna know how many to put in there so that they don't kill each other, which is kind of the other thing. Once they start to grow, <coughs> they're too close together, then right. they get big and beautiful and kill each other. Well typically what we've seen that is a good suggestion for natural spacing is a staggered yep. alignment. Um, but you know in from my standpoint, you know, as long as it's, um, as long as it's kind of uh, demarking the area yeah. sufficiently, I, I don't, I don't have any problem with quantity or spacing, you know, um, as long as it does the job. Yeah. yeah. And the so. theory would be, you know, over time. I mean, that park has been utilized since kind of the beginning already, so yeah. you know, it's going to be here for a long time to come. And the idea would be that those will fill in and create a natural barrier. And I have confidence they will. I would so, think so. So, any other uh, questions or comments from the commission? I have a question on the, the mow area. I don't really see it defined on this plan, it's just a little line. Is that going to be going out well past the bleaches and follow the no, contour of the ditch? Is it right there? It's, it's a kind it's of like a dash. dash. It's like a square right here. Yeah. yeah. That's that's the that doesn't look like 160 feet then. At a square. What goes 10 foot no mow zone. But then it should be 160 feet long. Well, that's it must go out well past the bleachers, but follow the ditch. That's where I was. Well, 160 to feet would would approximate. I think it begins, you know, at the edge of the planting area, which would be the hind right. backstop, for example. Right. Um, so 160 feet would take you um, well mm -hmm. beyond third base. I mean, you got a 90 foot third base, and you're probably. Yeah, that's what 40 feet from that spot, so and then you know, it's going to run 160. So my guess is it's probably going to run. You think oh, if you if you're familiar side. with the site, I it's guess yeah. it's going to run from the back middle of the backstop out to the bullpen. Can I can I just interrupt you, Mr. Hall, for a second? Um, so just to be clear, so here's so here's I don't know if you can see this too well, but so here's the no mo zone, and then the start of the stream. But you're starting the no mo strip. So here are the plantings in the darks area. But you're going to start that no mow zone upstream of the plantings. That was the plan. it would be upstream and then of the go. Planting, so that's the, the 160 feet. You know. Yeah. I mean, that so would be the theory. That's a good of no strip of that's yeah, a good Just strip to give you some land. more background, the engineering department went out and, and plotted this where it fits best. So it actually will abut a area that's approximately 10 feet wide at the front and at the back they they dyed it into the corner so okay. it's not going to be left you know yep. kind of standing by itself yep so this you know this was not just drawn on a plan but you know it was surveyed in and, and engineering put a put a couple people on so there. the no mo zone is this dotted line that goes this way and then up this way. Yep. It's yeah, front back. Back. past the planting area. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's on both sides. Of the yeah. Planting. Yeah. I misread. Okay. Now I can see it. Yep. Got it. Well, I like that. So I think I it's going to work. I think the idea of the planting area being connected to so it doesn't right. look like right. being sprung yeah. out of yeah. right. nothing. Right. That it kind of follows a certain natural. Yeah, it's the dash line. Yep. yep. Got it. Okay. Sometimes it helps to highlight it. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, I think that's um, I think that's fantastic. That's just my opinion of it, um, and I don't see any any further issue with um, the Arbor Vitae. Um, I think if you just stop mowing, you're going to get the volunteer vegetation that is supposed to thrive there, and hopefully, hopefully, it's not all invasive. Is if it is all invasive, <laughs> we may, you know, we'll. We'll, uh, we'll cross that when we. Oh, I, 
come it's to it. It's going to be a work in progress. Right, and, right, you know, the, right. I, you know, and I, I did mention this when I was before you at the last meeting, is that, you know, I understand, you know, the goal. Um, it yeah. certainly isn't connected to the project yeah. exactly. I mean, it just happens to be in the same park. <coughs> right. Um, and in right. the same general proximity. So, um, you know, the goal was to get the dugouts done before the spring Yep. Um, because I think that's going to be healthier for the for every, for all concerned. You know, everybody from the high school baseball team <coughs> to the you know to the to the conservation <coughs> concerns of what's going to be disturbed. I mean, it's out there. You know, it's probably ten inches of permafrost out there now. So you yep. know, I mean, yep. to be able to really contain yep. you know the small amount of digging that we're going to do, yep. but then we're going to need to wait. It'll get scheduled in as, as it can be. Um, when, when are you, assuming this gets approved tonight, just making that assumption, um, what's, what's the schedule going forward? Well, the game plan is, I mean, we've kept the, um, the contract. The contractor has kept himself busy through this month. You know, originally we had hoped to do it this month, but, you know, the situation being what it was, He's busied himself for the month, so I'm thinking that we're, look, we're looking at the actual project of the pads for the dugouts and so forth uh, being done. In February? In February. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions from the commission? No? Any questions or comments from the public? Sorry I didn't ask you to so John, jump just, uh, in ahead of time. Can I identify myself? I mean, for the record, for yeah. just for the so sake I'm, of uh, I'm John Mr. Halsey. Halsey. I was just going to say that there is a pre-activity meeting with this before you start. Yeah, and that's a 72-hour in advance. Yeah. That I saw it. I mean, it's 72 hours, but if you can catch me in the office, then you know I can go right down, just like anything. But I, yeah. usually if you call on a Friday, it's going to be Monday. Yeah, so I do know. I mean, I, I actually read the, you know, the certified letter that came in. It's right. very clear that there's, you know, steps that are required. Yep. And um, I know that there's a, there's a pre-activity meeting. Yep. You know, we're at this moment, um, I would say two weeks out, and we'll have a better handle on that. And that once tonight is over, we'll talk to the contractor tomorrow and come up when that is and, okay. uh, and make arrangements to, to we would meet with you. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yep. Okay. So, and then right. go from there. All right. Thanks for coming in. Um, so at this, at this point, uh, I make a motion to issue a negative determinant. Uh, negative determination. We well, we're just we approving the plan. Okay, so then yeah. motion to approve the planting plan. So I'm clear on that. Um, I know that there's an, uh, there's an appeal period, and I was led to believe that that appeal period has now passed. It passed. As a result That's of right. our, you know, what happened mm -hmm. at the last yep. meeting. Yep. So yep. we're good to go as soon as we have the free activity meeting yep. and, and <coughs> the conditions that you're looking for. Right. Yep. Okay. <coughs> so, well, I, I move that we approve the planting plan as, as discussed tonight. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Opposed? No. All right, thanks for coming in, Mr. Halsey. Thank you. Thanks for working with us on this process Thank and uh, looking forward to seeing. We'll come out and do site visits after come work is. Game. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do that too. We'll do that too. It's a busy field. It is a busy field. Yeah. It's a very busy field. Okay, um, at this point, um, let's take the next agenda item since it's past 7.20. Um, let's talk about West Street Blue Water. Um, hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My good name evening. is Corey Barrett. I'm from the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. I am the Director of Construction. Um, I'm here for the, the, the Canton presentation. Dr. Lyons. 
pipe that we're installing on West Main, on Great. West Street Great. for um, long-term improvements in the water supply system. Okay. Um, I'll introduce who I have with that, the team Good from evening. MWRA. First of all is Jerry Sheehan, our construction coordinator. He is ultimately responsible for the construction of this project. Mary White is our environmental monitor, so she's been out on this job site. Monitoring the work that the contractor is doing. We have Steve Comaletti, he's the president of, of Caliaco Construction. Okay. And awesome. we have <coughs> Kevin Beauregard from Face Pop and Thorndike, our right. consultant. And he's out on the site daily as a resident engineer. And we also have Bill Byers, the LSP that we have. Um, so Kevin's going to give a little, a, a very short presentation <coughs> of where we're at. Um, <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank the commission for allowing us to present today. Um, this is regarding, obviously, the, the silt that was deposited in the Howard Street and Oak Street outfalls uh, due to the dewatering process that the contractor has been doing. We are about 14 feet deep in the trench, so we have a lot of groundwater that needs to be dewatered. Uh, initially, it was pumped to catch basins with silt sacks and then discharged down the, down the stream, which in turn resulted in the sediment. We have since, uh, or the contractor has since made a silt remediation plan or removal plan. Uh, I'll get it just to So this is their siltation removal plan. Um, you guys had this uh, ahead of time. We had sent this last week. Does this, excuse me, I'm sorry. Does this supersede what was sent earlier? Uh, no, this is the same plan. plan. I, there was a two or three line plan sent, but this is the latest plan. Okay. And this was this also sent out. Okay. Okay. Do you have copies of the latest plan? Like I do. Okay. I do. So prerequisites to this, uh, to the siltation removal is um, the MWRA and Face Pop and Thorndike, as well as Reading ComCom, will be meeting prior to the cleaning, which is today. Uh, we're going to discuss the, the actual removal plan. And their procedure, uh, number 62 Oak Street, has a driveway, has access to the stream itself on Oak. And after talking with the homeowner, they've granted access to the going walking down to the stream and removal. Um, inspections are made daily from here on out during the uh, dewatering process as well as after the removal process. Uh, so just to make sure that there's no more sediment being deposited into the stream. Uh, a check dam, which is gonna be a filter fabric wrapped, in, or stone, crushed stone wrapped in filter fabric, is placed just about four feet away from the outfall at the Oak Street Dam and um, a second check dam will be placed about 15 to 20 feet downstream. So that way when they are removing the silt, as you can see in item F, with five gallon pails and shovels, this is to prevent any silt to continue on down the stream. Do you think you're a little, um, you know, maybe you can get through this, but um, 15 or 20 feet, did you check, did anyone go down there and check that out uh, to see if there's sediment further down than that? It's down as far as um, the homeowner 62 had built some sort of pool mm -hmm. for, um, for capture of, of <coughs> something, and um, it, I think it's down as far as that. I think we're gonna have to check out how far that that extends because I'd walk past his property and into the back there and I did see sediment. So okay. make I sure that, that 15 to 20 feet in the plan is each section will be done at about 15 to 20 feet and then we'll move down. Okay. Move down. So that second check dam will be 15 to 20 feet from the first. Okay. And you're just gonna continue on down. Continue and that down manner. until all the sediment is removed. Okay. So this is just a loc location area. Uh, we're working here on West Street. And this is where we're currently dewatering at the intersection of Oak. Um, this all discharges down Oak to what we're calling the Oak Street Stream. Um, 
This is the Howard Street outfall, which the drainage on West Street comes to. And that's where we also found some silt as well. And the removal plan will take into effect both the Howard Street and the Oak Street outfalls. Next. Just, just to be clear, you're um, using the same approach at both locations. Correct. Um, Kevin has a couple of pictures just yeah, to show we'll, we'll the, um, the stream, yeah, and then maybe you can get a better idea in case you haven't been there lately. So this, so is, this the is the Howard Street um, outfall, and you can see we have some, some, some silt and sediment within the stream. As preventative measures, um, we also met with uh, Chuck out there as well. There was a few check dams put in to prevent the uh, sediment from moving on down. There's one here, and there's also one a little bit further down the property as well. We have set up at the intersection of Oak and West a dewatering well, which is essentially a three inch pump in a piece, piece of PVC pipe down, and we have a crushed stone well. So all of the, all of the groundwater that we are currently digging north of, or actually east down Oak, is gonna follow that crushed stone, be pumped out into the, if you hit the next slide, into the sedimentation removal basin. This is uh, the basin being constructed. It's constructed with hay bales, as well as crushed stone lined on the bottom, filter fabric on top of that. There was also another layer of crushed stone, as well as what's called a dirt bag on top of that next layer of crushed stone. Here's a dirt bag. The water is being pumped from this, this hose into the corner, goes through the dirt bag, trickles down through all of those layers, through the hay bales, and out along the gutter line. Along the gutter line, we also have four sets of check dams, which are crushed stone wrapped in filter fabric. One, two, three, and one right before the catch basin that it discharges to. Also, we have flock logs at each set with this jute netting or curlex, and the curlex helps to catch all the flock material prior to it following down into the catch basin. This is the Oak Street Stream outfall, so also as preventative measure, this is a last bit, um, a last ditch method to get any extra sediment that ended up down the actual catch basin and drainage line into the stream. We have set up a check dam of crushed stone and filter fabric with flock logs and this roll of jute netting or curlex at the end to prevent anything else from further down the stream. Record of these observations will be sent to conservation daily. Sure. Um, in the event that you're working and somebody from conservation can't go out and visually inspect ourselves. Um, so um, I guess it, it brings that this looks like an improved approach over what I had seen. Um, when I was out speaking to you yes. um, in person. Yeah, what date that was, sorry. Um, yeah, and we'd like to thank Chuck Tyrone. I mean, he came out and um, he, he, he saw some of the measures that we were implementing, yeah. they weren't working. We, and we've yeah. always been ready to try anything. And, um, you know, he asked, what about this, what about this? Um, and yeah. and we're, we're trying to implement every measure that we can with, it's not, um, but we just don't want sediment traveling towards that brook. So right. we have been working with right. um, Chuck on that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, it's a lot to try and keep the sediment from getting there. Well, um, I guess one question I have is, um, even with these additional protective measures, if you get a lot of flow traveling um, that 
route down towards Oak Street isn't, even if the water that's pumped out and is, um, goes into the catch basin is completely clear, isn't simply the velocity of the water going to have a potential to kind of resuspend what's already maybe been laid down by, you know, previous slugs of silt going that way. You know, and, and kind of to the point of even if you have a, a really ideal system pumping and discharging clean water, um, until we get all that silt cleaned up, it, you know, all that silt is just, a, I see it as a possible additional problem <laughs> for you, if, if you follow. Sure, you I know, mean, we could. You know, that stuff is so fine. Well, I think to Hydrograss Technologies, they're the, um, the company that I've used on very similar sites over and over again if this becomes an issue. And the flock material that we purchased, the flock logs, yep. <coughs> um, it's in, it's, it's, it's all settled and it's, it's quite solid. We were, um, that, we that were, handles that issue. We were working with it, you know, we were investigating the depth of sediment, Jerry and myself, in a few locations, and it just wasn't resuspending. I had the sense that it was going to be um, fluffy and cotton like and would travel down. Yeah. But um, after speaking with hydrograss and experiencing that ourselves um, when we were monitoring it, it, it wasn't moving. So um, the flock logs were effectively they um, had stabilizing. They the, had the recharged the particles and they had settled um, and, and you know, were adhering to the bottom, mm. the substrate. Which should make the cleanup even easier. It should, yeah. You know, because when you do go in there and dig that up, get free suspension. Right, and it's, it's, it's a thin layer in places, and yeah. underneath it's more, the, you know, the native material. In some places it's sand from the roads. Yeah. And it's going to be um, just, you know, a careful process of, you know, determining what is what, and then yeah. carefully skimming that. Deb, can you just sort of educate me, because <coughs> these flock logs, I'm not familiar with them, do they, um, it's a polymer Oh, okay. So it doesn't actually release um, no, it any chemicals to the environment. No, it either works by a negative or a positive charge. And Got it. Okay, I have and, a and, and, yeah. and reacts with the fine colloid. Yeah. Bulks them up. Coagulate. They drop to yeah. the bottom. Yeah. Got it. Recently. Yeah, recently. Um, were there plans for sedimentation con during this construction? And weren't they, were they approved or uh, what were they? Right. The, um, the, they had what they call silt sacks for the catch basins, uh -huh. and that usually captures all the silt that you that you pump into the catch basin and then you come along and clean those silt. Yeah, but you got to keep after them. Yeah, you have to keep monitoring and cleaning them. Um, this material um, that we hit at the corner of Oak and West Street, we didn't hit any water as we came up along the apartments, Reading Commons or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We only encountered this groundwater as we got towards um, between Countryside and Oak Street and it was very fine and it started getting through the silt sack material and um, dispersing into saw some cloudy issues in the brook in some of its areas. So that was that was what prompted us to change the, the method of um, um, trying to capture that s smaller sediment. Hmm. Do, you, did you want this back? Or no, 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 no. Are you just going to stand up? Yeah. Thank you. No comments, but I'll pull it off. Um, in no, I don't know if it says that in the, in the uh, order of conditions, but discharging into a storm drain with a silt sack in it is, and I've seen this on other <coughs> projects here in town, I, you know, I just think that's pretty optimistic. And <coughs> it does say in the order of condition that if dewatering needed to happen, their plan was supposed to be presented to the commission <coughs> for approval, <coughs> um, which that part didn't happen, and it seemed like there was a reluctance to even understand the order of conditions um, or take those steps just to save some time with the project. 
So, you know, I don't. I'm, I'm assuming everyone's done, been on a few jobs, but I don't usually see uh, silt sacks and storm drains uh, being called the sedimentation chambers or whatever containment basins. I mean, you can almost see through those things, uh, you know. Anyways, so I don't. It, it, I just thought that was um, the first mistake. And I know when we got the, the containment basin up and running, realized that we were well beyond um, normal fines. So it was hard to, and it was hard to kind of catch up with the project at that point. And I do appreciate every time you did stop and kind of let um, the experts come in and, and try to develop a new plan. But uh, I think it did start out wrong and, and um, in, you know, the, there's, there's certain elements in this order of conditions. I'm not sure that, that anyone's read through it that asked you to check out Howard Street. It was identified in the order of conditions as something that needed to be watched. Um, so I think it, uh, my predecessor did a good job writing this and trying to warn everybody of what to look out for, and it, it, it really just wasn't followed. So um, that being said, we're here, and we're, we're trying to clean this up, and I... I hope that that goes well. Uh, the containment basin in the sediment pond has been running for a couple of days now. Uh, are you satisfied? Has that been clean water coming through? Any I problems? I checked it daily. It's been clear. Any, everything that goes into the catch basin is crystal clear. Um, I, either, even when we do end up digging and disturbing that groundwater, um, it comes out into the drip bag as mm -hmm. that soapy discharge but then once it hits a block log it settles out and every like I said everything that goes to the catch basin is clear yeah one of the things that the construction company discovered was by not plugging up the pipe at night it was filling up with water and most of the pumping they had to do <coughs> was to get that water back out of the pipe two pumps were going in the morning so as soon as um, the construction manager or Kevin noticed that, they plugged it up, there was less pumping going on, less volume, and uh, things started to work a lot better. So there, it was, uh, you know, that was a, a, good, uh, a good thing to find out. Okay. We've been pumping 24 hours a day continuously, so you don't have that stop, which helps bring the silt up. It's when it cleaned continuously. And uh, barring any unforeseen We'd be happy to, to um, meet with um, Chuck or any of the Conservation Commission members and, and walk the stream and, and, and determine the limits if necessary. It, um, the method would still be the same that we yeah. would, um, Mary would oversee um, the workers that go in there and try to remove the sediments. But, um, you know, we're here to say whatever it takes. If we're not going to try to um, walk away. In fact, you know, um, Howard Street is mentioned in the order conditions and when we saw a small disbursement at Howard Street, I believe Kevin called the Conservation Commission right away saying that, you know, um, you know we want to tell you this, there's something wrong here. So we, we, we understand um, the nature of, of, of what happened and, and we're trying to rectify it. So we're willing to um, go out on the site and perform this task to, to the limits necessary, which, um, and it's whatever the Commission wants. Okay, all right. Um, so I did notice that you said that you're going to be finished by the 30th or you're going to try to achieve uh, completion of the cleanup by the 30th. You are going to stop after or start after the project's finished on West Street. Is that? That's right. Yes. Could you could you start in on Howard Street sooner since there's no discharge into those storm drains? Sure. And secondly, I didn't see anything about the actual cleaning the storm drains between Oak Street or West Street and Howard Street and West Street and the discharge point at, 
uh, Oak Street. Is that going to be something you're going to take care of? Just jet those out or somehow get the sediment out of those pipes? And it may not be there, I'm not sure, but has that been thought about? Um, we were actually talking off the, talking about TV in it to mm -hmm. see if there was any sediment prior to going in there. Because if you go in there, um, I'm, I'm going in a different direction, but if you go in there with a flushing truck, um, I'm sure George knows that creates another issue. Now you've got a volume of water coming down and we may cause more damage. So mm -hmm. we were thinking of maybe going in and taking a look with a TV truck and see if there is any sediment in there. Now if there was, then we could address that issue. So I'm not sure it's, it's there now, but when we did notice the Howard Street project, we walked up, looked in the storm drains, looked down them, and you could, you could see the sediment in the pipes. So it was there. I'm not sure if it's going to still be there. It might have been flushed through with all the storms. So. Yeah. Um, any other questions or comments from commission members about the new siltation removal plan? So you haven't started any of this work yet? No. I mean, is there any way to see the efficacy of this? Prior to starting? Well, no, you're not going to no, be No, that's to. why I said I think we should start on Howard Street, mm -hmm. and it's that's a different it area. Right? It's yeah. kind of contained. I mean, they have about 300 feet, and they could, they could basically block it off at both ends, and we could develop a plan that actually it will work for the larger area. I could I could see um, approving this for starting of work on Howard and depending on how that resulted, um, you know maybe then revisiting this at one other meeting to see whether it's going to work as well on on the uh, Oak Street is that outfall. I think it's good to keep discussing this, and I'm, I'm sure to two commission members who uh, are not here tonight. But we want to get going. Yeah, we do. We've got to get going on this. Um, um, so can you, do you guys have enough resources to have someone start in at Howard Street and can you tell us what, when that would start? Yeah, I believe the resources are there and contractor to start to, as early as tomorrow, um, depending on us getting um, Mary White's availability as well as uh, Bill Byers' availability to oversee the actual removal. Um, so you have the materials you need? I mean, um, <coughs> you know, tomorrow would be great, but if it's not reasonably practical. Yeah, I, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Well, the other thing is we want Monday. to be here Monday. We would like to meet with Chuck to determine I, the limits. Yeah, this first. is not, I mean, I think I could, we can just really handle this. So if I'm available, and we can just get going, you know, pre activity meeting and start at the same time. I mean, even George could be there for me in the morning if you wanted to. And just, so you're going to start, follow this plan, and try to remove the stuff, the shovels. And if that doesn't work, Mary's going to be there to kind of develop something else. I think that that all works out, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow, and I'm hearing that that's optimistic anyways. Tuesday. Tuesday is fine with me. Bob, why don't we say tentatively Tuesday, and yeah. if, if it comes together, that's great. Um, and maybe we can get an update at the next meeting, uh, which is which can be terminated. Right. So um, come back at the next meeting and and tell us how things are going. <coughs> so right, that one that might not if if, you, if the um, the work plan has said to complete the work by the thirtieth, that would only leave um, right. a couple of days to do Oak Street. So maybe that's that tentative date of January thirtieth could maybe might get pushed back a little. Um, if, 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 unless you want to proceed with Oak Street based on what was occurred, that's all. Uh, that's all I'm saying yeah. is if that yeah, January 30th easy. date that um, was in the enforcement order has to be, Oak Street has to be cleaned as well. So that wouldn't leave too much time to do that. 
you know, um, other things that you know the commission has done, and I'm, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, we have met um, additional meetings besides the two s um, scheduled. Um, it's rare, but we've done it. Um, another situation could be that um, Chuck sends out whatever results have been found by electronically to the whole commission. Um, and people from the commission, without discussing it among ourselves, we can all respond back to him. And he can kind of get everybody's individual input. Because we can't have, the problem is we can't have a discussion of this without a public you know, gathering, a public meeting. So um, otherwise it wouldn't be ethical or right. Mr. Zamboros, yes. Uh, Madam Chairman, I think that would work out well because uh, let's say they sign on Howard Street Chuck sees it and sees that everything's working fine and everything. Yeah. Why delay the cleanup of the other one just to come back yeah. to the meeting and tell the commission it yeah. works? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and I think I really think the, the, the reason for coming back to the commission is to, is to discuss strategy for a revised plan if it, if it doesn't work. Yeah, and I think there's been enough kind of um, ongoing work uh, outside of the meeting that's gotten us to here and now. Um, you know, we didn't have to stop work 100% from December <coughs> 28th or whatever the date was till now. You know, we've sort of been working with Chuck Help and uh, other people going up. So um, if there's anything that needs to be, like, if there's any new information, Chuck can send it to everyone on the commission and people on the commission. Please respond directly to Chuck with your opinions, your comments, your critiques. Um, and if you can... Uh, find yourself over to that part of the <coughs> world at some point if it's convenient it's uh, helpful to see this uh, up, up front so so um, I'm gonna make a motion that we um, that we approve this siltation removal plan for application on Howard Street for for the moment um, and um, and only only for um, the Oak Street stream if um, if the Howard Street um, removal goes satisfactorily. How much time would that be between them starting Howard and then being able to start? Well, I hope that they know about it. Day. I don't know their resources. I don't know how they could transition over. It sounds it sounds like yeah, no, it's it not going to be impeded. The workers would be right in that area. It would depend on say Chuck's availability. Say. Yeah. Howard Street went well. So, you know, uh, what what would be really great would be, um, you know, coming back for the meeting on the 28th and, and it's all cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Both areas, all set, all taken care of um, without any additional discharge. So, there's my motion. Is there a second? So, uh, what was your motion again? So <laughs> I'm going to ask you for a, I'm going to ask for a start date and if things are working well allow them just to go up. so I want them to be able to um, develop their plan if it doesn't work on on Howard Street and even on Oak Street because <coughs> being in the field and trying new things is how it's going to work this this yeah. is contained from what I from what I see so we have enough check dams in there so if they're working way up the at the um, outfall area they can mess around with that until they get some sort so of something it, that works isn't your start date Tuesday Start date is the 20th, yep. and that uh, gives a week. It gives, it gives almost two weeks to finish or to get somewhere on to Oak Street. So I'm not sure we have to change the <coughs> deadline for the 30th yet. Okay. Um, and I think that we would determine how far you're going to go down just by being out there and visually mm -hmm. inspecting the stream. Yep. And when it's when we're done, we're done. Do I need to make a repeat my motion somehow? Do you, do you, do you get that motion? Hold on. Ms. Scanlon made motion to approve application for Howard Street starting January 20th and only for the Oak Street, Street stream if Howard Street is clean satisfactory. Yeah, to proceed to Oak Street if, if their procedures okay. are effective and Mm -hmm. 
a second. Is there was a day you wanted a daily visual report? What, yes, Where will that be I sent I to, to, to Chuck? You just email if you have. Uh, record the daily observations and send okay. them to the uh, Chuck. Okay. Send them to Chuck daily. If you have photos, the smaller the size, the better. Okay. All right, thank you. Otherwise, our emails all explode. Depending if there's any updates. Right. So, like, uh, like, just like a like site inspection. They have construction documents, and stuff should have been in there. Since our last meeting, we went before town meeting, and um, I know that there was a motion, uh, instruction mo motion filed uh, that was just earlier in the week, and part of that is actually surveying uh, Timbernex Swamp and this area, so, um, and that's what we're going to ask for tonight anyway, so, so we can also survey the Timbernex Swamp area and the private, the private where the private parcel is so we can put up some sort of boundaries or signage so people walking through there will know when they can come upon the private area versus the no hunting area to the next one. But just to be clear, you've asked the town meeting, you asked the town meeting I to survey it? I actually or didn't. Or are you a asking? town meeting okay. member did. Okay. Um, so I, we were coming here tonight to ask you to, to do this, to survey. It. So was, there might be some overlap. The that. result of that request? What it was approved. It was approved. It was voted on, yes. Ms. Oliver? Yeah, there is an instructional motion that I know is being taken up very, oh, mm -hmm. very, very soon. Um, Excuse me a second. Can you keep the door open? <laughs>
capacity to be able to look at in the next month, you know, if this is not going to come to mind. Okay, but the actual, so just so I'm, I understand, so the actual motion um, approved the town engineering department to go out there with survey equipment and survey in the property line. No, that's not what No, okay, then what exactly? I don't have, the, I do not have an instructional motion to vote. They have it. Have it. Okay. But it, it's it's multifaceted, and you know the, the the goal is to is to certainly discover public safety issues as as they've been detailed. Yeah. And, okay. And, you know, Just in this in the, on both private property and the, and, you know, and to come up with some some solid public safety solutions, you know, I to the problem. I just want to be clear: we, we don't have a surveyor. Okay, it, it says the Conservation Commission does not do survey work. We don't have a certified survey. It says to determine and implement strategies that will, in the immediate future, improve the safety of nearby residents and travelers to the neighborhood of the Timberneck Swamp by, for example, clearly and visibly delineating the boundaries of this conservation and imposing no hunting signs in all parcels of town land, etc. Okay. Okay. This is actually. It's an interesting, it's an interesting um, yeah. situation out there, and and, um, and I, I sympathize with you. You know, if I were out there, and, and if I had heard what you had heard and seen what you had seen, I uh, I would have probably be sitting here. So, um, so um, it looks like we. So one of one of the strategies um, that we discussed at the last meeting was to generate some signs, and so we drafted some. Those, those are just something I pulled off. These things get modified every year, and we put them up in certain spots, and I, I don't have my sheet. But I think at the end, the last page, it says uh, where we... I approve. Did I uh, add that to it? So, so one is for Bear Meadow, and one is for North Cedar Swamp. No, they're not the same. Cedar Swamp. They're like different locations. Oh, oh yeah, North Cedar. Oh, North so it's like South where you're going to put okay. them is like... But everything else is the same. That's why it's going to be small. That makes no sense. <laughs> so, so do I take it that all of these <coughs> areas, there are some private properties where hunting is allowed? And is it, it well, I'm a little confused. But some of it says bow hunting. It gives you the the dates and then then like for instance the northern end of Bear Meadow open to licensed bow hunters October 13th December 31st and then you go d further down hunting is also permitted in, in the north and south cedar swamp and is prohibited is prohibited in all other conservation areas is that bow hunting is it rifle is it uh, yeah this um there's there's better language on some of these sheets, but I guess I left them back there. This one, uh, where should hunting be allowed? Bear Meadow, North Cedar Swamp, South Cedar Swamp, and then it says the north end of uh, Timberneck Swamp. And this was a recommendation to the Conservation Commission from the Hunting Policy Working Group, April 17, 2003. So, um, and then it tells you who was on that in that working group, uh, and so it's. It's, it discusses four areas, one of them being the Timberneck Swamp, but not the narrow area near uh, Libby Ave, Belmont and Libby. So that's the, the only thing I discovered, that this working group um, in Timberneck Swamp thought that it was okay to, to hunt in certain areas there. Okay. Whether or not they, they whether or not they passed, check that against. Now the that's 2003, and that, you know, that was a while ago, and there's been um, kind of a work in progress happening out there. Is it still safe? Would the committee feel the same way 
with the new information, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but in 2003, that's what they said. So, so the posting of signs, um, at, at this point, at this point, these could, uh, you know, sign like this could be laminated and posted. Put up along the boundary, along Charles Street, um, along Timberneck. Um, I think I'm not sure at what point. Um, I, I'm wondering how we're going to really. I, I don't. I'm not entirely sure, and it's open for discussion. I'm not entirely sure it's on us to identify the limits of their property. I think that's going to be a very challenging thing to do back there. Well, I mean, we have it on the map. We could we sh that shape up there. Isn't there some way to do that by the? Um, <coughs> the map. I'll I'll just I'll just tell you in terms of GIS. The map. Each map layer on a GIS map is accurate to a specific map scale. And sometimes these map layers are overlaid on each other. And what you're going to see, um, especially in certain places where maybe things don't meet exactly. For example, if you look at the S in street next to Charles Street, you'll see um, like a street that goes to a cul-de-sac, you know, and then you see those dots of the wetland mm -hmm. past it. You know, maybe those cemetery. dots. Oh, is that it? Thank you. Charles Street Cemetery. Yeah thanks to the sort of mm -hmm. page north side of that. You know, maybe those wetlands should be bumped out far from the road. Maybe they should be closer. You know, so the accuracy of each data layer may, every data layer has its own inherent accuracy. You know, so when we're going out with these signs and if people are posting them, they need to know with some measure of confidence whether they are truly on conservation land or not. How far would they be off if they've been asking for this? Five or ten feet, or but like I, the good person to ask would be Kim H. Mm. So they decided the um, <laughs> there's a couple of signs. Uh, this next next um, says three or more signs should be posted. Uh, one across the street from the Charles Street Cemetery, one post at A Street, um, and then off Libby Street. I'd, I'd like to think that they're placed um, at regular intervals so that the public sees it and they're visible by access routes. So when you when you post a property, you don't you're not going to post it right at the road. I mean, when you're right. up in Hampshire Seas, right. they're 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 ten or twenty feet in, but you can see them from the road, and you do enough so you you know they're supposed to be certain certain distance. So I don't think we're going to get into an issue on the outer area of Timberneck Swamp. I think what's important is to to um, get some sort of understanding of where the property lines are on that um, in internal area. Because then we could say no hunting on Timberneck Swamp because we decided that's what we wanted. And, you know, <laughs> this is a hunting <laughs> so area going, going forward from here. So people would be warned. Okay, number one, when I read this there's no there's no discharge of guns we're just talking bow and arrow period so some of this wording is really confusing to me what's the property that they're allowed to hunt in can somebody show me the outline you mean in front of it's going to be sure. this property right here it's just bow and arrow right well no. it, well it's why does this say property that's why the that that parcel 
situation here, and I think it's a real, I think the marshals have identified a real unique situation with this property. That, that piece of private property where the cursor is sitting right mm -hmm. there. Yep, right. no, I, I see it. Yeah. Okay, so that's a piece of private property wrapped completely by conservation land. By the building. Yeah, which is then wrapped by res which is then wrapped by residential and roads. So, you know, when you look at that, um, I do believe that inside your purview, if you were to post the perimeter of cons of all conservation land, which of course would surround that piece of private property, my my reading, my current reading of the law is that you cannot carry a gun across a po no posted sign, no hunting posted sign. So, um, well, that's interesting. The, the effect of the, the unintended consequence uh, of doing yeah. that, which I think is a very positive thing for the public safety issue that's raised here. So, what you're saying, though, in in, in a piece of pro private property, you are allowed to to use whatever during this season. Be it gun Not bow. exactly whatever, but yes, you can certainly shoot okay. a gun. But, it, but this yeah, is like saying just for the conservation land, land. Correct, you're allowed to bow and use a bow and arrow as right. long as you, but no discharge of firearms. Okay, right. got it. Yeah. Just the limitation of bow and arrow is the conservation property that is currently available to be hunted right. on. Right, gotcha. Okay. Uh, but I think the situation, if, if you're not familiar with it, are, are you familiar with the special permission? This well, person, this this from property owner, isn't isn't there a special the property permission owner has granted property permission, permission I believe, to two Reading residents to hunt that property privately. Right. I, I believe that exists, and I and you know whether those are the I mean I, you know I don't question for a minute that they. But it still should be firearms. No, it's actually legal. No, it's yeah, yeah, legal. that's it's what okay. he's. That's yeah. what I was trying yeah. to figure you can take out. Using photographer. Right. They can what? Firearms are allowed inside that the donut awesome. hole. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really important that people know the limits of firearm area when they're going out to conservation. In the short term, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I believe me, I've been looking at this because you know, this has been sent by town meeting and, and you know, the selectmen are have been asked to come up with some potential solutions along with some other bodies. So, I have a feeling that if you post the con this this particular parcel of conservation land as a no hunting, you can post it no hunting, and you guys have the ability to do that. Right. Now, I'm the way I understand my most current reading. I don't believe you can carry a gun across conservation land that is posted as no hunting. Now. They can't. A, a, a short term <laughs> solution, at least, till this is vetted more completely. I mean, it, I, now I don't think that's going to stop a bow and arrow person from going in there. And I'm not sure, you know, if that's what's going on. You know, the, the, the people who have permission to hunt there, I think, are bow hunters, from what I've been told. I, that's an anecdotal statement. But you've been hearing gunfire. Yeah, yeah, we have two yeah, situations yeah. there. We have two situations. Um, one is one is the gunfire that we hear but, at night. But we have to be careful because that's an enforcement issue. Doesn't and that's what happens to the debate. It gets very quickly right. switched to what the marshal see it, what the marshal wants. Can I ask you who saw that? Yeah, and it's an enforcement issue. When do you hear this at Christmas night? Christmas night, five or six shots, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve, shot. Christmas night. But then, then. Around the, dusk or no, later? It was, it was pitch dark Nine. Christmas night. And, yeah. it's, and it's on record with the re with the dispatch with the running police. And other neighbors, no one called. Well, not many people call, but other people stop and see. So obviously, to me, day. that's nobody hunting. No, yeah, I'm. Why not? Deer of Crepuscula. They're they're even dawn coyote, and even dusk. Even coyote and fox there till midnight. You can shoot. I mean, it would be illegal in Tippernick Swamp, but well, it's on legal parcel. on the private parcel. It would be legal. With written permission of the property owner, without anyone else, anyone else's knowledge, the chief of police doesn't even know who the two, hunt, if there are two hunters, with the bows and, and 
Yeah. So it, I, that's it, problematic it's for me that when someone runs out there. That's all part of it. What has to get fixed in this motion? Right. I, I told. I absolutely agree with the, the marshal relative to this property right by their home. Um, I think it needs to. We have to. You know, the town has to come up with a good solution. I actually think you guys have an interesting opportunity. I don't know. I'm not positive of that. Well, I, I'm not opposed to posting signs. I just, I, I think that will be a, a, a step in the right. I mean, it'll be a lot. It of would help. certainly be a deterrent to other hunters that well, don't have special permission for this particular piece. It would make it clear because there are cases we hear from other people that they see tree stands throughout Timberneck Swamp, and that's illegal now. So po posting the signs will make it make people know it's illegal to begin with. That's what we'd like to see. Are you talking about putting the signs on the exterior, like on Shell Street, or, or the interior or wrapping around that private property? That's a good question. I don't know. Both. <laughs> but if that's you put them on the deterrent. outside, that's what I'm saying, is it a deterrent? Well, right, but, but I'm thinking know. that if you're allowed to hunt on your property or shoot firearms, and you don't know where the edge of the property is, you can wander in the conservation area and still think you're doing illegal. I guess, but these people have been uh, hunting there. Uh, I would think they'd know where the property, or should know where the property they is. Know. Well, they should know, but honestly, I, I mean, to, if you peeked into that hole, <laughs> yeah, no one's going exactly. to, you no, know, no, unless there's, there's some not a laser real line good around solid no, I, under, I understand, but. Unless there's some real good solid turning point bounds out there. Then they're, they're hunting they're illegally know. then. Then, then, then. Yeah. Hunter if they don't know where that property boundary is, yeah. they're hunting illegally, right. probably. Right, and maybe the posting of the signs would be um, yet another way for them to. I guess what, but you've got to serve. You've got to get. You got to get the right line. Yeah, I, I would say if, it, if I was right. going out there, yeah. I would go to the dry area, and maybe walk up the hill and stay on the Timberneck Drive, Charles Street side of that. And I would be pretty confident I was on that gentleman's property. It's big enough, and there's a dry area to identify it. So anyone who kind of has those kind of skills. Could This is kind of not off topic, but off topic from the signage. Has anyone thought, like, thought of purchasing or talking to a land trust to help purchase this parcel? I, I wasn't sure. Work, yeah. I'm working on that. Yeah, right I now. mean, it just, I mean, that's like a long term solution to this That'd issue, I think, would be. Yeah. And you can work with a land trust who will purchase it for you and then the donor or something. How do we get to contact a land trust? I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing that. Because I, I think that. I mean, because it's really like, because this is all going to be, because nobody's going to be sitting out there being like, you have to do it in here, and so. I don't think it's going to stop a nefarious person who decides to go into any wood and right. start shooting. Right. Yeah. But I do think, you know, and I, you know, I've, I've actually initiated um, a contact to that trust okay. um, to try to have a discussion. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how expensive it's going to be or if that's already well, thought of. But, but I just you know, furthermore, know. it's unbuildable. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's unapproachable. It's, mm -hmm. I mean, its Land value yep. is extremely limited. Mm -hmm. How many so, to me, the solution—I I think, Allison, you really on the right track. If we could have a—I'm looking forward to having a nice discussion on behalf yeah. of the selectmen with this, with the trustee of this trust, and have moved in that direction, knowing the town meeting has charged us with uh, find some solution. That is a really good one for the neighborhood near where the marshals live. Yeah. I think that would be an obviously great solution and might not be as distant as one might think. Yeah. Uh, however, in the, in the near term, I think that there are other safety measures that could be taken. And you know, just in general conversation um, with, with some people on the board of selectmen, this was a thought mm -hmm. that this could be an interesting first step that could create a, you know, more of a a posted safety zone. Yeah, because then uh, it would be know, easier to like just I said, post all around and be like, don't go you know, in here. The, <laughs> the bad guys that are going to go out and do stupid things with guns, this is not going to stop them. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. But it's going to make it clearly illegal. Yeah. Right. But, you know, I mean, the marshals, in fairness to them, have, have made repeated calls, and those calls have been investigated. And the problem is, you know, how do you find somebody at midnight in the middle of that swamp who's, you know, by the 
the time somebody gets there, that's the problem. I understand. Night vision goggles. I understand the complaint that the whole neighborhood has. It's like, what a pair. you know, when, um, I mean, when my children were younger, I mean, you know, when my son was, yeah. I mean, if I lived where you live, and I was, and, and my son was 10 years old, I could never have kept him out of there. I mean, he, he just didn't. Well, I used to play in there when I was I, little, so. I'm sure that you did. Yeah. Because I live right, th right near there, and I used to. And you were a good baseball place. player. <laughs> 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 yeah. But I, I, I think that we have a public safety issue right there where you're looking, and I think that there are a lot of steps to take, and I think this might be a really good intermediate step to, you know, to help you. I don't know that you have to get a complete survey done in order to post a farm letter. Server should be a problem that interior ought to worry about. Right. When we, I guess the, the, when we discussed it before at the commission, um, <coughs> we ran into the issue where you posted no hunting on the outside, but somewhere on the inside, it's it's you're hunting, and we needed to let them know they're coming out of the no hunting zone. I mean that's yeah. the, that was the basic um, thought from the commission. So that would make us want to at least know where the property boundaries are. And, I, you know, also, I guess I've heard stories, um, never talked to anyone that this happened to, but um, the hunters are chasing people out of uh, the area. And I think when we're talking conservation land and passive recreation, I you know, personally take that offense to that because we're not getting any more land in conservation unless we allow people to use it. And if some guy thinks it's his spot and he can chase people out of, you know, totally our land, that's wrong. That. So, I wouldn't be chasing the mountain just because. I've, I've, I've heard of people walking through there and them to be chased out by uh, someone, just to say they're not supposed to be in here. So you know, if you're hunting, you got to keep it quiet. You got to walk on certain ways. You can't walk all over the place because nothing will, you know, travel the same path it always does. So it's important to kind of maintain, you know, a pretty clean area. And that's what's happening with the hunters. They're they're trying to keep people out during the hunting season. So where they've spotted the deer or the deer trail, it doesn't get disturbed, and they know where things are where the where the deer is going to walk. But the question is, are we chasing them away from their private land or from conservation? Because it's not lost to who knows where these people wander in, where they are. Well, I'm assuming they got all the way out when they were told to leave. So <laughs> it doesn't matter where we approach them and yeah. talk to them, but they probably left the entire property. Yeah. There shouldn't be anybody allowed to chase anybody. That's again an enforcement issue, as Mr. Marshall pointed out. The enforcement issue is part of the problem. In the conservation uh, rules and regulations, we don't allow firearms on conservation property. So, um, I'd like to I'd like to um, approve the posting of signs um, along the uh, you know uh, along the inner just inside the. I mean, Chuck, maybe you can help me uh, word this just inside the property line of the conservation land, um, mm, especially along Charles Street and the access roads. Um, Should we approve um, the survey? We're not a requesting a survey, but we can approve that we agree that if we agree the town that it would be wants to put a do a survey, then the commission is okay beneficial. with it. It would be very beneficial. It would. The actual wording of the sign, I, I'm not sure. Um, it, um, is this the date it's effective that we are saying no hunting? It changes every year. Changes every year. Yeah, those have okay. to be modified every year. I was but if it's no hunting, that. it's no hunting at, at you know at the edge of Libby Ave. But is there going to be a hunting sign or private property sign, something like that, to demarcate where the the other I, spot is if we don't have if we don't have their survey 
information you can't put a private property line uh, you know our maybe we should struggle with wording of a no hunting sign right now I think that would be the most productive step forward um, and then figure out how to get a survey too to do this environmental survey. well and then figure out where we're going to put our yeah. no hunting sign yeah. and if the future survey is going to happen then maybe we would have another set of signs just outside of that you know if you're leaving that private property and heading out in, <laughs> to a street then there would be another sign so, so but I'd like to put at least one set of signs at the access points because nobody should be living here um, and uh, and we could easily I mean according to that document there shouldn't be any hunting at all between Libby and um, to the to the right and left of Libby Avenue in those portions of the swamp. So Belmont Street. I'm sorry? So Belmont Street. Is right. Uh, right. It was Belmont. Right. Between, between Belmont and Libby and between Libby and Haverhill. There shouldn't be hunting. Yeah, I don't think that if the 500 foot rule would not um, allow you to be down in that area. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I don't know if you know, I think at least one <laughs> one sign should be posted facing north and south. You know, so that anybody walking from that wetland toward the private area, private land you know what I mean? Well you know, maybe I'll just nobody can ever say anything. I just I think it's clear enough to say here, post the property. <laughs> but enough, I don't think yeah. we need to put again? I said it, I think it's clear enough just to here. say post so the property. Yeah, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I mean I think I think along here, along right. here, and along Haverhill maybe Street. and along Haverhill Street. Right. Yeah. And there's um, no public access like from the next is it, would it be worth putting something here? Well they have to cut through so much I think I haven't yeah, been down there in years. This is where the town's gonna put the water line in, right? Mm -hmm. that Between oh, Libby and Belmont. Between Libby and Belmont, yeah. there's gonna be a water line. So Ivy, yeah, Ivy and Belmont. So right here. Um, so it might make sense to put a couple there, just where there's it's there's clear proximity to a, a public road. Yeah. So I don't know how many signs check do you do you know the frequency of <laughs> what every 30 feet <laughs> should, should i say oh is this my responsibility <laughs> no i'm just uh, asking for a discussion of it. I mean, <laughs> no i i think it's i don't yeah i don't think we're gonna do every put up that feet, many uh, i think it's feet. i think it's like every 30 feet or something like that it's crazy close if you're that posting a property it's yeah it's supposed to be we call it 50 feet. 60 signs yeah. put all those up no, no, I don't. I don't think that was the spirit of what the original committee had. I mean, it's just yeah. posted at a few spots. They actually have a few spots there um, along the trails. I don't even know where the trails are back there. I'm not sure there are trails. Something. Allison, yeah. <laughs> there's got to be something. Well, I'm not sure there's a definite like no. when I go on my mountain bike, there are more defined areas and in uh, some of that swamp. And it really isn't, I mean, it really isn't a swamp. Uh, it's kind of left behind our house, but it's pretty dry uh, as you go along from the next ride. And then right across from Shell Street, it's very inviting there, right across from the cemetery to walk in there. You, yeah. you jump over the brook, and yeah. it's very and dry there. But again, it's not like a welcome, like at Bear Meadows and other places where there's a path and things like that. But my kids, my son, as you said, he went in there. And he was and he, he was one of the people chased out by, you know, a guy in camo and stuff. And, but anyway. Okay, so. And you, you, does, and everyone's okay with not posting a private property sign? I'm just thinking that someone could walk in there thinking there's no hunting allowed. I mean, we all understand the situation, but someone who's Ooh. checking out Reading on the website and Says wants oh. to go walk around in here. It says no hunting. So. Well, that's, I think, first step is like, where are we going to put the signs? I think the second step is, what's the sign going to say? And um, is it okay for us to put the signs up not having 
Do we have to tell anyone that there's private property in there and there's hunting going on? So I think there should be fair warning. Uh, <laughs> That's why it's good to hold the internal sport boundary. We could almost actually have a little map of that and I, you know, on the, this sign and saying private property. Private parcel where hunting is allowed. Is allowed. Just they know that general Hiker area. Beware. Just a, in, in just a yeah. general, just so that you don't want people running in there. It sounds like we're promoting the hunting yes. in that area. That's what I'm afraid of. You'll have more hunters on that private parcel. But I think we have an obligation to do that. Private. I mean, how many people in Reading walk through swamps? So, it is yeah, I mean, that, that's, that could it's be. True. Yeah. It's going to be drier season. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it does uh, get dry in there. Yeah, yeah. it does. Well, when it's frozen, it's what we go walk through there now. Right. Yeah, that's right. But I think warning people there's hunting overrides the fact we may be encouraging hunting. I don't think you want to get a lot more people there if the hunters know about the area already. Some of them don't. You'd be surprised the ones that don't. Yeah. I think because, as this gentleman pointed out, they don't want to call a lot of attention to themselves and disturb the area. Right. right. But yeah. what's the bigger danger, um, having a hiker go through and um, get accidentally on that property and not know there's something allowed there, or more hunters being there, which might instigate more calls to the police to come out to check it out. I'm getting I mean, confused now. Do, if, are we allowing bow hunting on conservation land? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. yes. These three properties. Okay. There, that's why I'm getting confused. Because we're yeah. saying no, South, if we Cedar put that Swamp. sign up, it just says no hunting. I feel like that's. You have to say no firearms. Yeah, like because it's like, it's and then like <coughs> except on private property at the bottom or something, but like they're still bow hunting. So like saying no hunting is like, not, cool not in Timberneck Swamp area. Is that a, yeah. so there's no bow hunting. What if that's a uh, cool shed? I'm pretty sure there's no. Oh, that's we'll what I'm, that's what I'm at, that's mainly what I'm asking. Rebecca, I'm getting confused. confused. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Employee Private, private property private. access by permission only. It doesn't say anything private. about hunting. It doesn't. It doesn't encourage anybody to hunt. Something to that effect. So these other hunters are hunting in there illegally. Not if they have his permission. Not if they have the property owner's permission. But you're saying that there are a couple of them, or there are a bunch no, of no. them. No, no. What we're saying is that it's, it's been identified to us that there are tree stands. It was actually in the guy's backyard. If yeah, in my yard, my uh, I'm at 88. I go way out into the into Timberneck Swamp, and I, I bet if I walk back there, potentially there could be. A, I've never. I don't go out there that often. There could be a tree stand there. That's all we're saying. And I know of one. Uh, and he took it down, the homeowner took it down, he was off Belmont Street, and he found one tree stand. Someone else told me on Hazel Street, he went in there with his son and her both for a walk, and they were told to get out because they were hunting in there, and he couldn't get a tree stand, and he accessed it from the Hazel Street side. Again, he could have walked all the way into the private, because you don't know when you're on the private yeah. parcel. He, this, this gentleman, well, my, my wife went to a very well den on the private parcel, but I, I do know of at least one tree stand uh, that was on, it was actually on a, uh, an abutted property. And, and he took it down himself. Um, what if we had on our sign, just no hunting on conservation land in Timberneck Swamp per order of the Reading Conservation Commission? And then under that say, private property within Timberneck Swamp Excluded? Excluded. But it does give them alert that there is private property within Timberneck Swamp that somebody should be alert to. Wouldn't it be easier just to put up signs where you think that area is that would say caution here or something instead of... You can, but then it would be a guess. Well, how, does, would the, how does the hunter know where to stay? Well, it's a guess. It's a guess. Well, sure. That's where we it's, guess. it's a guess. Mm -hmm. It needs to be surveyed. It, it yeah. absolutely does right. need to be surveyed. Um, you know. Yeah. And and also pursue the property owner and see if they'd be willing to sell the property to a, a land trust or concert or the town. Is that a great idea? Yeah. So I think this is a. You just give the opinion of one person. shares the belief that there is a public safety issue that has to be resolved in the next 90 days. And and we have an instructional motion from town meeting to say, fix, I'm paraphrasing this Go very ahead. loosely, fix it, figure it out, come back and tell right. us, how, you know, what, what are our potential solutions. I mean, another potential solution, I, I, I'm hoping to be in touch with the trustee of this thing soon. Obviously, one of the things is the suggestion that Allison made. Another is to get permission from him to post that as a no hunting zone. If he posts that it's no hunting, right. it really, I mean, at least you have that step going forward. You know, now, as I said before, I mean, hopefully the, you know, my guess is that it would be unlikely that hunters on Christmas night at, you know, at Ozark 30 were out there hunting. They were illegally, mm -hmm. illicitly, you know, misbehaved. And, you know, and so, you know, that beca that's a whole different, you know, issue. But the, the safety concept of a piece of private land that's ringed by conservation, mm -hmm. which is then ringed by houses, is an issue that right. is correctly identified and needs to be fixed. Um, yes. So, and, you know, and, and, you know, there is a mission in place to try to do that. Unfortunately, this comes exactly on top of, you know, from a selectman standpoint, we have three solid weeks of budgets that we're dealing with, literally at least one or two nights every single week. Now, that doesn't mean you can't make some progress here. I, I think you can, but, um, and, and I think that there's a goal to do that. Um, I don't know if you guys are out of bounds to put these signs up on the perimeter. It doesn't seem like that's an awful thing to do. No, I think I, I think I think we can put it. Like I said, I'd like to move forward with this. I don't want to. Um, I think we've discussed it a lot. <laughs> I think I don't want to discuss it to death. I'm going to mm -hmm. kind of move on. Uh, but 
I I want to agree. I want to get some agreement from everybody on commission about what the sign is going to say, and what it's not going to say, and where we're going to put it. Um, I think we're with entirely within our rights to put a no hunting on conservation land in timber next swamp, and not even put a date. Well, yeah. and post it on your and, and post right. that, um, and we can leave the discussion of the private parcel out, and that could be an omission that we regret or an omission that we, you know, gets resolved through these <coughs> other means. Um, but we can at a minimum do that, um, and I think we should. So, um, so I move we do that. Is there a second? Second. Any of those in favor? Are you guys just waiting for me to make a motion? <laughs> no, I don't <laughs> think so. I don't know. Any more? Any more? So we can at least do that. We will at least do that. Um, and, and we're talking about the major access points? The major access points along Charles Street and Haverhill Street. Mm -hmm. and, um, and at the end of Libby? And I think at the dead end of Libby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we get public access in Timber Neck, did you say? Yeah, no, it's okay. a private, it, 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 there's one unbuildable lot on Timber Neck, and our neighbor told us that uh, someone asked for it because she thought he owned it, and that's what he was walked across the other day to Timber Neck, and he said, no, it's private property. I've never been approached by anyone. I think the people on Belmont Street would appreciate some signs too. Even though it's, there's no public access there? Yeah, because that's where the tree stand <coughs> was. That's true. There was a tree stand in one of the um, neighbor's yards on Belmont Street. Probably one of those parcels where it goes back to the mm -hmm. end of the swamp, maybe. Mm -hmm. well, maybe. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, we can, I mean, it seems if that private parcel gets closest to Charles Street, the most logical place to enter that private parcel is by Charles Street. Yeah, yeah because um, it's, it's drier. So, right. mm -hmm. so posting at 30 foot, 30 to 50 foot intervals along Charles Street, uh, especially I guess closest approximation to the property limits over there, I think that would be great. And then we'll post. Um, couple of signs at the end of Libby where public access allows where it looks like there's foot traffic and post um, a couple of signs along Charles along Haverhill. Sure. Um, in terms of, of Belmont Street, um, you know that property owner can post who sees a stand in their backyard and they know it's their property, they can post their own signs on their own land. Okay. Entirely within their rights to do that. We can't go onto their land right. <laughs> and post But you can access it from is the it their, public Is it their too. stand or somebody else's stand? Or either? somebody else's stand. And they, they didn't rip it down? They, they did. did. They put they it did. down. Okay. They removed it. Is, you're talking about um, some uh, place down there for drainage. Is, is there an area on Belmont Street that we were at an earlier meeting where they were talking about drainage? Would that there's be a good spot for a sign? I mean, is that an entrance? There's to the no floor? bridge across this. There's quite a stream back oh, there okay, that okay. you can't cross without okay. a little bridge or a mm -hmm. nice yeah. big fat log. So it's that place where they're putting in the, the pipeline for this? Right, right. It's between that's the end of Libby. That essentially becomes like a dirt road, really, because they're opening it all up and taking everything down, so and making it an access area that people are using. But not from Belmont, not from, from Libby. Because Belmont is that arched street right. to the left. Because there's it a street. Cross right through? There's no cross. I don't believe. Do you remember? No. Is, is there a little bridge somebody's built across that street? I don't think so. I didn't see anything. Sometimes some, a butter's neighbors just decided right. to put a pallet. Oh, no. Two by four. I know it's right, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, don't I haven't seen it there. there so, much, so um, if, if you would please you know, convey to the selectmen. I'd be happy to <coughs> go to one of the selectmen's meetings when you're discussing. Uh, you know what, I'll, you know, Email I'm me. here. Yep. So whenever I attend, you know, a yep. board commission or committee, or I bring me. a liaison report back even though I'm not your liaison. So okay. I'm here, so I, I'll be happy to report this at the next meeting. 
Right, and I'd be happy to show up to the select group meetings if I could make it. I, you know, um, you know, obviously everyone's welcome at the select yeah. meetings, but I, you know, I will certainly report it, and um, and I and I will say that I, you know, we need to be hot on the trail of mm -hmm. this particular thing in, in Timber Neck. I agree with you. Well, I felt that way from the very beginning. So it's going to be discussed at the next selectman's meeting? No, you don't know? There's no way to know? I know, know it won't. At the, at the public, when I, you know, at the beginning of a selectman's meeting, selectmen report where they've been doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to report this because I'm here and I'm hearing it, so why not? And it's a way for, it's a way for us to transmit information to each other. And there's a forum for it. Mm -hmm. And it also is a time that the cameras are running and anybody that's watching it will be able sidebar to this that I, I think we need to get this fixed in the next 90 days and, and, and no screwing around. You know, I think there's a few different ways to do this um, and we'll have to pursue them, all of them. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I was just going to add one more thing. Um, is there any way you can restrict the parking at uh, the Charles Street Cemetery to There, are there no parking signs on the right side well, of the road I'm, there? We are commissioners of roads, too, so... Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. know. Parking we'll is out. probably a, a huge component of access. So, yeah. if, I mean, I, I don't want to take anyone away from his use on the cemetery for, you know, anything. But I don't know the answer Someone who's that using question, it for parking, or the Charles Street itself. Yeah, but like, is there, are there, like, no parking signs there? Good point. Yeah. Right. Oh, no. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I'll make the signs. You can pick them up on uh, Tuesday. Sure. Go out and we'll take the gun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would just, I would just make sure. The marshals were going to. See that point of that private property yeah. that touches Charles? Yeah. So if you stay at, you stay at the far end of the cemetery and then away from the cemetery, you'll be away from the private property. I mean, I guess if I was the property owner and I wanted to make an issue of it and you happen to put it on my property by mistake, I could make an issue of it. But if we know that the only place that really touches the access point is Charles, that looks right about where the I think is you know you can kind of guesstimate. This is uh, my belief is that what you're, the step you're taking is a good short-term step. But you, you know, it, believe me, it, it, it needs a bigger fix than this. As you, yeah, you guys so are only seeing the tip okay. of the iceberg. Of so this. just. <coughs> Stay away from the culvert or the stream and go on either side, and then it's his responsibility to prove that it's not town land. Correct. That's how I see it. Correct. And you know what? Frankly, I, you know, the owner may, you know, the trustee of, of that land trust may be very amenable to a discussion. I just haven't been able to pin him right. down. Because mm -hmm. if, if he would agree to not allow hunting and pay the fee posting or not, that on a short term basis would have cut right. further before. Precisely. I, you know, I mean, there are, there's a series of Short, medium, yeah. and long-range solutions to this problem. So the first one is post on the exterior. One is talking to the sign and see if maybe he wants to. Yeah, and, I, and so like, oh, I'll post I, you know, I, I'm hot on his trail, believe me, because I, I do want to talk to him uh, because I'm sure he is unaware, and I happen to know it's a he because I've got his name. Yeah. Um, I, he may be totally unaware of the firestorm right. that is going on. The unintended consequences he has Correct. of allowing hunting. Yeah. Um, and I think he just is probably being kind of a good neighbor and figuring out, okay, you want to go out and go on, go ahead. Yeah. Um, right. Because the land is, look at it. What are you going to do with it? You know, I mean, it's along, it, 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 it's begging to be part of yeah, sure. that conservation. It's like an orphan out there. Um, it's begging for that. Well, and to be honest with you, it might be cheaper to buy it than to survey it. It'd be great to get back. <laughs> It'd be great to get it back. Yeah. Can, I, I'd like to move on to uh, old new business so we can get home b before midnight. Right. <laughs> um, so Chuck, minor project, 20 Joanna Drive. Yeah, 20 Joanna Drive. It's um, there's a project for a frost wall, um, okay. four foot foundation. It's um,
65 feet from the wetland and it's enclosed in the area that uh, presently contains a pool. So there's a fence all the way around it. So it's okay. already has its own erosion control up. So that was approved. Um, okay, great. Pinedale dumping. Uh, Give everybody an update on Pinedale dumping. So um, the dumping in Pinevale, I had sent out a letter and was about to send a second letter when I was contacted by the owner who just didn't understand why, um, I guess, repositioning leaves or redistributing leaves was an issue um, that the Conservation Commission needed to speak to him about. Uh, he, Thanks for your service. Between the first phone call and the second phone call, uh, I guess some neighbors had got wind of the fact that the Commission wanted the uh, leaf and debris pile removed. So they took off, as I understand it, the very latest material. I don't know what that was, but again, this is a five foot by 25 foot pile of debris. And they relocated it deeper into the Pinevale conservation area. Closer to the wetland. I've, I have no idea, but the fact that they actually just thought to bring it further in was, was uh, the laughable situation. I so, you know, everyone just doesn't understand what we're trying to do. Um, and uh, at, at what point did, do you think is this resident coming in to uh, talk to us? He was supposed to contact me. He said he was uh, not available tonight okay. with, uh, with the time that he was coming in. Uh, we both agreed that uh, nothing could be done until the spring anyways, and it would be next fall when there would be issue, but we shouldn't let it go let's, that let's long. I mean, I, not to, I didn't mean to make it make you guys seem like I've given them all. I mean, I was pretty... But I'd, I'd like I, to see him... At, I'd, I'd I like was to pretty see him set back when he told me that it was redistribution of leaves, and um, I asked him about the access and his fence, and if he would close that up, he asked if the commission would pay for it. So there was no <laughs> willingness <laughs> on this gentleman's behalf right. to come up with a solution. Well, we could pure denial. We could talk about a couple of things. We could talk about um, he was sent a letter. Correct? Yep. Yep. Um, we could talk about um, fines. We could talk about um, I I I'd really you know, I think another phone call to um, urge him to come in uh, the sooner the better uh, by the next meeting. Um, we'd like to have a plan in place before the before the ground thaws, so that at the earliest available opportunity, something pr something good can be done about this. I think um, I think we should make good use of these winter days to set up the plan, so he's on board and the neighbors understand that they're going to have to take advantage of the curbside pickup from now on which is generously offered by the town. Not all towns have s as many curbside pickups as Fairfield. So um, I'd like you to keep talking to him. And if, um, you know, uh, if he's available for a site visit or if, you know, uh, call me. I'd be happy to go out there um, some, sometime. You know, if he needs to see another person besides you um, he hasn't out seen there. Me. Okay, but if it, I'm thinking a little bit more attention paid to this. I, I've gone out, I've taken dozens of pictures. Um, luckily we've got, you know, a, a, um, a conservation land advocate living next, you know, abutting this property. So she's keeping an eye on it for us, but we gotta get this guy on board or I, I would say start issuing a small fine. And if he doesn't respond to that, let's Take the fines up. You know, he's dumping on town land. That's under our management. It's not right. It's not fair. I would only add that I have not seen him dump. But the only access and point to this doesn't leak have any is uh, through, pictures. Is his I, I don't know if that's going to work. So. Um, but you said he. 
he moved the pile further in and he said it was just a redistribution of <laughs> no, no, he's very clever. He doesn't uh, say that he did it. He said that he doesn't know yeah, about this pile. He told me it was an undulation of the land. Who's so, um, <laughs> well, 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 let's, well, let's <laughs> explore it. So from here to here was an undulation of the yeah. land? Awesome. Uh, he doesn't know anything about the pile. I mean, I, he, he, he doesn't see a pile in the back of his yard. What pile? Well, we can... It's not, it's not his yard. It's not, you know, he's just saying, look, this is, this is not my issue. So you need to make it his issue. It is his issue. It, but, but, you, but again, really, I mean, you need to... I don't know what you're going to do. I mean, you should, you should uh, have him come in here and see if he wants to talk about it. But I think that's what, what I've just expressed to you is what you're going to hear. have him come in and meet with us, otherwise we will start issuing fines. And um, the town manager has instructed us that um, if we are to issue fines, we should be serious about collecting on them. Um, and so that's my sentiment. If other people on commission don't think fines um, are the correct course of action at this point, What's the you know, let's discuss. For collecting it? Sorry? What is the process for collecting it? A ticket is issued. Right, but if he doesn't pay, then what's the source? Source, okay. We don't want to tax it to taxes and stuff like that. It's just. No, I think you go right to the source. Um, what's the It's been done in the past. This is not under the. I really think that you know we, we need to if we ever had any extra money to buy a, a field camera or some sort of surveillance camera for these places <laughs> and, and actually I think we would be astonished with what we <laughs> see. Stalking I've got, I've got one of those stalking cameras. the residents <laughs> <laughs> do the yard work. I know they're not that expensive either. They're not, they're they're not wireless in ones in the backyard, so this would be an animal. And also with this fat old guy walking around it was me. I was uh, I was walking I was walking in a trustees of reservations property, the one at Ward Hill up in North Andover. Mm. And I was walking out there and in the middle of nowhere, uh, somebody just walks out of the woods towards me and just starts chatting. And I'm thinking, I don't know who you are, mm -hmm. and I've got my kids and I don't know what this is about. So he tells me he's a nature photographer and he has set up in that trunk in that trustees of reservation place, a whole number of infrared targeted, um, triggered uh, cameras. Huh. And he was telling me with wide eyes and winking and nudging, you'd be amazed what you take oh. pictures of out of here. <laughs> and I'm just going, How are you? Oh, I'm just going, none of my business, thanks. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Some of the stuff is you know, I stolen. I think you know, it's probably just it hidden and nobody would expect it to be in there. I, I think this way, I think getting people in here and talking to them and um, explaining to them how we need them on board. I, I mean, it's not fair for them to dump leaves on town land. And a lot of people in town do it, and it's still not fair. It's I, not was right. a, I was on board with that one, the pile. I'm, I'm, I'm so appreciative of this community and what they thought was very good. But I was, a, I was on board when the pile was four foot high. <laughs> but now that it's 25 feet long and six feet high, I'm not, I don't want to convince anybody that they, you know, they need to change their ways. I just think, you know, I just think we've got a problem there and something has to be done about it. You know, if he, if we can talk him into an installment plan of chipping away at it. Well, it's um, really educational making him realize why you were against it. Right. I don't he, think he he's going to care. Yeah, I don't think he's going to care. And there from what no, you said. There may be no amount of tickets or, or incentives to that, get somebody to care about it. But to have his fence open and allow all the neighbors to just to walk through his yard, he, you know, that takes takes a certain type of person. I mean, I don't, wouldn't have them anyone do that in my own. 
And it's the same thing with these guys on Dustin Road. I mean, they own both sides. These people going down Dustin Road right. have to basically walk on the other people's land to get there. Yeah. It's, my I mean, just blew my mind. I was like, what? Just dump it at your own house, guys. Right. Well, I've had people, I have wetland in back, and I've had people dump. And I said, what are you doing? You know, get it out of there. Yeah, my husband's gone after it. Yeah. A couple of people. They don't walk in your backyard and dump, do they? No, there's a there's a drainage right. ditch yeah. in drainage area. There's all ours is all wetland. The property goes like this, drainage ditch, and these people have you know lawn. It used to be wetland, but it it's lawn, and so they'll take that. Well, it's just it's it's, it's just uh, woods. It's just woods. Right. Yeah. It, you know, as right. a matter of fact, across the street from them, from this area, there's uh, there's another drainage. up to the top with yard waste. It's just, it's just crazy. That's way too much because there's a stream on both sides of it. Right. So, I mean, as soon as we establish this policy, it would be great to systematically go after whoever's doing this. So there's Kinsey Street. You dump it into this, you dump it down there. There's, it's all over town. It's pretty rampant. Um, so it, w it would really improve the drainage in town if we could get a lot of this stuff initially. Um, what's the sense of, of other commission members about issuing a fine? Well, Has he know. had other chances to come into the meeting other than tonight? I don't think he's asked to. Um, I'm not sure. No, he was asked to come to tonight's. Uh, I thought he was asked to come to the other um, December meeting, too. Oh, yeah, that's right. As long as he was asked more than one meeting, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Yeah. No, he he's only asked to, to go to the first meeting, and then I was going to contact him to you know, get a little, a little tougher, whatever the second notice would be, but it would be more stern, and to say that you must come to the next meeting or fines will be issued or something like yeah. that. But he, but he called and, and we talked. Yeah. And um, are, are we issuing fines because he's dumping, or he's not picking up what was dumped prior to this? Because he won't be dumping until next September, October. So we're not, what are we we're not saying explicitly out? that he's dumping. What we're saying is this pile is on the on conservation land abutting your property. Dumping. And the only access to this pile is through your land. Therefore, we have no one else to put responsibility for the cleanup of this except you. And now it's been redistributed. So is it if it's still been redistributed, there, or is half of it gone and it's still half of it? It's a large pile. Know. There's, it's going to take a huge. Effort I remember seeing a big, huge pile from yeah. when you when you said they redistributed. The top, still a lot left. The probably. newest oh, okay, the material. Two or three the, feet. The, the, yeah. yeah. Well, you got to get the rest out then. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, Terry, where do you stand on issuing fines if, if he doesn't come to the next meeting? If he doesn't come to the next meeting and doesn't remove it. The fine shouldn't be not coming to the meeting. The fine should, should be he put something there and he didn't get it get it out. Okay. That's four of us. So if you could let that's the quorum right now. So if you could let him know we'd like him at the next meeting. Um, or the pile removed. <laughs> but he okay. can't burn I it. think, Which I think then he needs Daniel to come to a, to a meeting, you're right. Um, the next meeting. But that we discussed fines and we're <coughs> yeah, we're getting more comfortable. And then it. come up with a plan to remove the pile. Well, I'm not sure they're I'm not it. sure he's going to be able to get it done. Although he has great access to his fence. He won't have to take his fence down to, <laughs> <laughs> to get to the pile. Oh, wait, we need it removed, pulled out, and sent to the compost pile. Right, not pushed further in. Not yeah. redistributed in size. Yeah. That's where I'm not sure about. We're going to need to really see the yeah. big pile the guy had the booth we can oh, yes. right make him do yeah. on our property yeah. 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 So. all right so um, that's pine vale um, we talked about Dustin Road already um, fee comparison so Chuck you went through we've looked at this fee comparison chart um, several 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 several
several times. I'd right. like to I'd like to put this. Um, Didn't we vote on rest. two things? Yeah. And those two things were. Do you remember? We had one meeting in December. Chuck, do you have notes? Uh, give me one second. Okay. Was it, was it in December? Was the last meeting? Yeah, I think it was before, before that. that. The 17th one, the last one that I was at, we were talking about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the 17th one, the last one I was at. Comparison. Yeah. I think we talked about um, a certified, if it needed to be notarized. Certificate of compliance fee or partial certificate. Right. For example, if somebody loses um, a document and it needs to be reproduced, we talked about a fee for that. Planned changes, minor project, $50. Amended order conditions, 25 for single family, 100 for all other. Amendments are out of the ordinary. <coughs> Board discussed how much to increase and which fees to add. Commercial RDAs from 100 to 125. Residential from 75 to 100 and certificate of compliance, $50 and affidavit, 50 Does that ring a bell? That does. It does. That. That's, that's from the um, uh, November 24th. But I think the certificate of compliance, um, I think that one was uh, a little bit up in the air because how do you charge for a certificate of compliance when somebody's already paid? Notice of intent fee. This was it. This was it. Yeah, so I know that came up, and Jamie said he was only, only, only wanted to approve that if it was charged at the beginning. But you can't do that. You can't do that. No. But, but this is okay. Ms. Scanlon made motion to present fee changes at public hearing as follows New no. certificate of compliance 50, new no. affidavit. 50 revised RDA single family home 100 revised RDA commercial 125 seconded by Mr. Sullivan vote 600 so we did vote on it okay so what are we doing about fees tonight what, why, why are we going back maybe it's just a leftover then from the last Chuck do uh, does anyone feel like we need to So what you're saying is we're kind of keeping the public out and we need to give them the opportunity to. Couldn't we just post a sign down by the office <laughs> and people come into these things? Or do you I'm, I'm only just taking care of Jamie who raises that point all the time. It's not mm -hmm. done in the two other towns I work in. So um, they just raise the fees. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you're, you, you can do it under the regulations. November 24th? Yeah. I think that's what you said. Oh, okay. Um, well, so it's voted.
voted in. All right, we voted it in. At, at this point, we can just yeah. start implementing. We're not sure we're on solid ground. We could always pass it by. I didn't think we had town voted. Council I, or we did. Yeah, it says in the minutes, I guess. That yeah, I did, uh, I didn't yeah think that we, we did. And I do remember that we did. Okay, good. We're all set then. Okay, okay the meeting schedule for next year. Um, I am not going, I may not be able to make April 22nd. Um, I think that's school vacation week in town. Um, I also have issues, not with this specifically, but with my class schedule. Okay. I am not sure right now, I will know next week if my class is every week or every other week on okay. Wednesday night. So that's going to be kind of an issue because okay. because if it's every other week, then it's perfect because it's staggered with the meetings and yeah. that's great. Perfect. But if it's every, every, every week, every then week. I, yeah, I yeah, don't know what I need to do right. sort of thing, whether I need to stop or just because I'd miss one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight meetings basically. Your class goes till like mid-May probably. Mm -hmm. Like right around May 13th. <coughs> okay. I just wanted to warn you, I will know next week and I will send okay. an email to you. All right. Thanks once I go to class. Yeah, I just, and I found that out today because it's like the only, I skipped it last semester hoping that it would be a different night this semester. But it's only offered every other year, so I have to. You gotta grab I it. have to do it. Yeah. So I try okay. to avoid it, but I can't. Okay. But I'll know next week what the deal know. is. Keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just made a note on my schedule that uh, daylight savings changes is in effect as of March eighth, because sometimes that corresponds to a change in. Mm -hmm. Um, site visits. It'd be great if we could put site visit changes <laughs> on here too, but I don't know if we can predict that that far in advance with the plus or minus somewhere. So um, that's something I'm going to look out for. And and I think the summer dates. I don't have dates for the second half of this year for myself, um, except I know. Of vacation the July the week between the two meeting days in July so I should look for I don't think there are any dates or something like that all right any other conflicts or questions otherwise I, I move we accept the schedule as proposed is there a second second I'm oh, sorry second all those in favor all right done Um, Chuck, we need to move some state revolving fund monies yep, around. We need a motion to, um, we do this every year, and it uh, supplements my salary. <coughs> and it started out when I went from 22 hours to 26 hours. The selectmen asked if we could, as a commission, kick some of the state funds into the town uh, <coughs> office or um, town budget. So we've been doing this, I think this will be the third time they're asking us to um, to, to maintain the $4,000 uh, in state revolving fund money okay. that we get. So um, Gene Delios is asking for the commission to make uh, you know, an a motion and to uh, approve that motion. Okay. Uh, I move we um, approve that transfer of funds. I'll second. So you have to... Give the exact amount. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, say the exact amount to the state revolving fund for the, the, the um, supplementing the conservation commission salary. You gotta, you, it's gotta be, I remember one year she was like, that well. didn't qualify. <laughs> yeah, go back and do it again. No. <laughs> she okay. is quick, explicit. So I move, I'm now gonna try to remember this stuff. Good. So I move we transfer we approve the transfer. We approve the transfer of four thousand dollars of dollars of state revolving fund monies to the conservation budget. 
to, to supplement the conservation committee. Uh, supplement the conservation salary. Might need to repeat this. To the town um, budget. Budget. I think Chuck Is there a second? Ready. Second. All right. All those in favor. <laughs> yep. All right. My heart, yeah. It's just so confusing. Hopefully, come here with this better. You can just dress that out. I need it written down. I need it written down. I need it written down. Well, let's see. So, let's get all that. Um, I'll watch the tape. Um, <laughs> there you go. I'll stick up. Uh, can I? I'll throw an agenda item in later. Um, administrator's report. Bus stop mitigation. Plan. Yeah, so we yeah. got the money back. Uh, we got the report back from the bus stop mitigation. And you know what? You can treat Crag Mighty with um, glyphosate. And it's reasonable. And the place is small enough not to bust any budget. So this came out because um, the bus stop that's in front of the Longhorn Steakhouse is in the riverfront, although across Walker Brooks Drive and right. two sidewalks. So the compensation had to be achieved, and George Van Boris, the town engineer, banked that compensation that we needed. So it was discovered that there's a small stand of Cragmites on the entrance of the market basket site, and he wanted us to look, Jamie asked that we look into it, George gave me permission to follow up with a company, um, Aquatic Control, to have them check it out and find out what it would cost to eradicate this small stand of Cragmite. And it seems to be somewhere around $3,000. It's a three-year term. So you treat it one year um, in the fall, treat it again, and um, probably one more one more application and three should years, do it. Three so years. Three years. So we have a, have a price to do that, but then when it came in, I discussed the project again with, with George Zambors, the town engineer, who reminded me that the gentleman that owns the Market Basket site wants to do his own um, ecological restoration of that area. And we would just be either getting into a bartering situation. If we did the work for him, he'd want something in return, but not discuss with him. It was George's understanding that that would happen. Or we would be doing, uh, he wouldn't allow us to do it because he needed um, the ability to remove the invasives for his project. So right, and he's talking about the, the area of land on the right side of that road going into the yeah. basket. Not it's not a very big area. It's kind of where it, where yeah. it opens up and like yeah. a took a right. Yeah. It's kind of right yeah. in that area. I very much yeah. he want to, uh, wants to clear open it. it. Oh, yeah. He wants to clear take. it. He wants to put a mini golf in there. Yeah. yeah. I'm, w I'm very happy keeping Dinosaur these, putting keeping putting these putting separate. <laughs> These issues. Yeah, so it, it, it turns out that, you know, we probably don't want to get into a, a situation where we have to barter um, no. prior to a project that we don't even know what Is it's going to turn into. Yeah. Danis, the Danis properties? Dan yeah. yeah. Uh, no one talked to them. It was just what George thought would happen. Um, <coughs> so. Okay. Um, I, I read through the proposal from Aquatic Control Technology. Um, the last paragraph says, if the budget allows, we also recommend cutting the dead stalks after treatment. Why, why do you think they're doing that? Cutting them? Following treatment. Just to make sure it's dead? The, typically, the stalks are left on site to decompose. So basically, maybe. Because I'm, I'm wondering, you know, so they treat it, it gets into the roots, it kills the roots. I was thinking, well, if they cut it, does that mean they're taking seeds with them? Like, yeah, I so was wondering, I'm like, why is why would they cut it? Because then they said it would cost an addition, it would double their cost. So the stalks turn hard as, um, like, uh, bamboo. Wood, yeah. So, and it's, you know, they just, they just fall over, they just blow over in the wind, so they're just going to be piled up, so nothing can grow underneath them. So it's, it, when these things happen, they want you to take out the stalks. To, well, to you're allow supposed to clip the plume first, so and bag it. So the okay. stock goes to oh, one to place, the and then the plume goes to an incinerator. Okay. So okay. it's it's, but just to spray them, and is good enough. I mean, I, I don't I don't know. 
it's not a really big area, so you could have um, a scout troop do that if they wanted to volunteer, or maybe just some volunteers. But that would. No, I, I didn't have any objection. I just didn't know. I just didn't know what the purpose was. What it was going to do for getting those frag monies out of there. That's all. Because that's how, like, that was said, like, so many years ago, to keep the flow going. So if you're getting going. On so at this point, we're not really going to propose this treatment. No, it's because not. Gonna, it's not going to go anywhere. But we did decide that it's um, a, a project that is affordable, and it's only going to have a spot yeah. in town town owns and it could happen. So we can hang on to the frag bin for this year to keep it going. Okay. Um, I do have one question Go though, ahead. and not to be a stickler, but um, you got one quote from aquatic uh, control. Uh, Are you required? For under 5,000. Under 5,000 you can get a, a single, and after over 5,000 you're gonna get three or whatever. Um, oh, I think it's over five. I think it's over five. You'd have to get three, but I think that's not exactly <coughs> how it works. Um, I think even over five, you wouldn't. You may not need to get. I mean, it doesn't have to go through that RFP process. So this is well under it. Yeah. And also, it was a, a kind of a. We were just looking for information. Uh, if it if it needed to go out to bid, it would be something that George would take care of. So through his engineering department, because it's really their project, they just didn't know how to access these people. Okay. So at this, so I'm sorry I missed this, but why isn't this going to be, why isn't George kind of taking this on? We don't have a site yet. Because we don't have permission He was, he was happy to do it. Yeah, yeah. he, he would have done it. Okay. It's just that the property owner doesn't want this. No, no, it's just. No, the property owner may have something else in mind. Got it. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> he might, yeah, he might use it as a bartering chip with the town, which the okay. town doesn't want to get into, and George didn't want to approach him and ask if okay. this would happen. Okay. Um, all right, next item. Any, any more bills to be adjourned? Um, minutes for approval, and then I'd like to talk about Con the Tennessee gas. Um, I think there's far too many minutes here um, that we talked far too long in the last meeting. Like <laughs> we eight, did. Eight this pages is, this of this thing. True. Reading through <laughs> this, it, like this was daunting. Eight pages of these. Yeah. Um, we can edit it down. Edit well, it I down to four. Where Oh no! Begin, that was no, it, it, I think it's fine, but it's just like I can't ago. believe how much we discussed. That. Did you approve the minutes for the last, the other meeting also? I the November meeting. Yeah. I think we did, because Jamie had some comments on it. I think. Oh no! Actually, at he the did end it? of this, it says minutes of eleven twenty four fourteen meeting were not approved, postponed till next. Yeah, meeting. he wanted to look them over. <laughs> well, he's not. I move we approve the minutes of the 11-24-2014 meeting. Was there any particular reason he wanted to, was some particular point he made, or? I, I, don't know. I didn't know what it was. I'm not sure. Sure. It was it some kind of wording? I, yeah. I don't know if he liked the first or something. Mm. Does anyone know what Jamie, what Jamie's issue was? No? No, I don't remember. No. And uh, unless he provided specific <laughs> comments, do you know Jamie <laughs> well enough to go home? And <laughs> no, um, I was on the commission before with him. Oh. It was like um, Jamie, did you review the plan? <laughs> did you look at the plan? <laughs> Julia, did either of you? Did Jamie give you any specific comments back on minutes? Sometimes he's done that with previous yeah. recording secretary. He's just given. No, he back. said he ne he needed to look it over more. He had. Okay. Had a chance. Well, if it, here, does I anyone did anyone look them over? I did look them over. Did um, it seem to? I didn't, I didn't express no, the. Uh, the meeting. I mean. <coughs> I know that I didn't have I any didn't comments have, on the twenty fourth, and then I looked at the last ones. Yeah. Okay. So I move we we approve <laughs> the uh, the November twenty fourth, two thousand fourteen minutes. Otherwise, we could postpone that to the next meeting, but I think we might. Don't we 
risk of pushing things too far out. And then forgetting what the and engine was. And then forgetting what the, the you know. I think I think whatever Jamie's issues, they may be. They may be the same issues with the next set of uh, commanders. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, if he has an issue with it, he could always bring it up, and we could go to to you. Amend the yeah, yeah. 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 Otherwise, go ahead. Okay. So I've made a motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Um, now these minutes, the Wednesday, December seventeenth minutes, um, they are extensive. Uh, but there's a couple. There's a couple of empty spots in here, like on. Um, I remember there was a spot. I couldn't recall who seconded something there. Yeah. There was a vote. I think I seconded the meeting for the town meeting article. With Will what page Finch. you on? Uh, Five, six, one, six. two, the third, third double sided back side. <laughs> Yeah, I kept reading yeah. it. How it's great to get this. Minute when we get out, so. It's great to get this detail. It's just so hard for me to recall without having the actual page in front of me. <coughs> so I think I think so. Do you have? Yeah, I wrote that in. That you okay. Seconded it. Um, and then discussion of Howard Street. There was another. You didn't know. Right. You seconded. Why don't you? I I don't remember either. No discharge directly into the catch basin. Something being fired. I what? think yeah, I think the conversation took off into another direction. Yeah. Why don't you put Why don't you put me in for okay. that too? I mean, I was there at the meeting, and it was a unanimous vote, so. <coughs> I move we uh, approve the minutes for Wednesday, December 17th, 2014. I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor? Can I abstain from this? Because I wasn't there. Uh, or do I have to then vote? it's a vote of three. Yeah, yeah. so three. do I have to vote? Absolutely. I'm voting. Yes, yeah. <laughs> all those three <laughs> That's okay. what I wasn't sure. That's usually how it works is on an administrative. I know this commission doesn't do that. At least some, most of those members have left. But um, an administrative act, it doesn't matter if it's <coughs> at that meeting or not. So I just I wasn't sure. <coughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and then I guess the last item I was just going to bring up, uh, we got a letter from Amy Hum. This is about Tennessee gas. It was in your packet. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We got uh, a letter from Amy Hum, and the gist of the letter is they respectfully request that we yeah. review our records um, to see if the area they are working in um, have any identified resources. Right. So there's a small line that the gas line goes down, but then there's a 20-foot area. It kind of is in this area here. So this is what they're asking us to check off on, something like that. Yeah. So to the north is North Reading and to the right is Tennessee. Yeah. So what we really want to find out is, if, is there anything of special concern kind of up in this area that they need to worry about? I have never been over there. I think Will's been in there. He's probably familiar with that area. He has some concerns. There might be some pools out there. Okay. So we'll okay. take a look at the problem. So we could say that we believe that there's vernal pool um, habitat in, in that area. There's potential. Yeah, potential. We, we haven't reviewed anything, but. No, no, but that's 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 yeah. fine. We have yeah. to let them know. And um, I guess I could send an email to Will and, and ask him about that. He's actually going to be at our next meeting. Okay. Um, he wants to follow up on uh, a vernal pool that he's having. On Bowl Street? Yeah, I think that's the one. Having it reviewed right now. But I'll, I'm going to contact them earlier. I'll just send a letter off. Uh, it's AECOM, so they're they're contacting all the towns, and they're saying, you know, 
you know, I think the comment was, <laughs> why don't they do it? But they're asking each town, you know, this is where the gas line's going. Is there anything we should be concerned about in that area? Well, I went to a, a meeting that uh, Eugene Benson was at, and mm -hmm. he said, you have to get this stuff verified early because if you come in late, they say it's too late, we've already made our plans. Mm -hmm. And so you really have to get these things identified before things solidify. Right. So I think well, isn't it a comment on, on the applicant to identify? I, apparently that doesn't work that way. The, the, the commissions they go up to park that they have to talk to, I'm, I'm just, what, what Eugene had said was that if they get along so far and then something gets identified late in the game, it's easy to get to overrule. So that we have to let them know ahead of time. He stressed that as a very important point that we want to have to identify greens early. I couldn't refuse so to. I don't know why. I don't know if there, there's a special reason. Uh. I don't know. Um, but so that's interesting. Um, so we should. I, d I don't see a deadline in this letter. Um, Chuck, they sent it on December 30th. Do you have any sense as to when they're expecting responses? I could, I could find out and get back to the commission. I, I think we need to know. We need to know when they need this information. The, soo the sooner the better. I mean, absolutely. Well, he, he absolutely. What other than the the do we know of anything checking Oliver? Um, it's not like this is a remote area. We, we have had no filing out there. Well, I think, you know, uh, uh, if it's going to hit Reading at all, you know, it's. Um, I think originally this it is, wasn't. This is thing. almost a, a best worst. You know, it's just a, a sliver of the north portion. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think they tried to find the town boundaries. In, in fact, when they talk about the towns being affected, they don't even include Reading anymore. They say North Reading and Wilmington and Windsor, but they, right, don't, right. they don't even mention Reading as because right. it's such an afterthought. Right. Um, but that's a large swamp. And I mean, really, they're coming in. Uh, interesting. So, so, so those those yeah. vernal pools are the blues, right? The yeah. blue d um, asterisks. Yeah. Interesting. So they're more. Okay. So where is that? The, where is the right? It's right here. So there's nothing on Oliver. Well, no, back up because you should go back to. If you could zoom back out, please. So do you see the where the river Ipswich River the boundary hits the Ipswich? Is that the Ipswich? Here's the boundary in here. Yeah, right up there. So if you turn on those layers. They run now. Burn I mean pool. the line, according to what I see, the line <coughs> goes. Where's the Here's one right here. That's a potential vernal pool. Um, so th it looks like <coughs> it goes. That line comes out halfway through. Here. Cause that's yeah, because it's in North Reading for like half of it. That still, that and then it slides in. Oh, okay. So I, there used to be a bunch of vernal but pools. I dropped up here. Oh, those are potential vernal pools. Oh. The asterisk is actual vernal pools. This one here is a vernal pool. There's some on there already. This is that's I mean, probably the within it. Over there, that it says. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, I see that. that. that it, it, takes it, it goes in here. It takes forever. That's why he's still doing the so triple deck. It goes deck in one. here and then it goes down and then across. Should we send someone out there? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be yeah. great if we could pet Lee up. Baseball players in Reading was out there or something. No, he, he, he was my old like I I've known him for a long long time and I, he was my little league coach. Oh, I, I played get like I little get league before I started playing softball. So, so he coached. Were you on boys team? It was like team ball or yeah. something. Oh, okay. like really <laughs> little. Really little, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so then I was best friend and like I played every sport with his neighbor. 
So I was always over there. Oh, with Julia? Julia Rafferty. Yeah. Because yeah. I was captain with her for all my sports oh, okay. at Reading. So. Did they get to know all the resorts? I mean, I mean, my understanding was these vernal pools kind of in the right place on the map. Although there's just maps you're all over. Um, what about the, the estimated, sorry, what about the priority I guess we don't have to sit here and map all night. Um, so yeah, let's let's find out, Chuck, if you can find out what what the deadline is. Um, and there, there are also some open houses that are coming along, so yes. it might be nice to have identified before the open houses in this yes, area. Yes, did I email that out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's something in February. There's an open house in February in Andover. Is it the twenty-sixth? One in yeah. Wilmington and one in Andover, right there, yeah. and the other one's in North Carolina. But it, yeah, it's, it's we could go to both and just uh, we should know which. So I think two questions for AECOM are: what's the deadline for the information back to them, and um, which is the better open house to go to, Wilmington or Andover? They're not going to give you ask AECOM that. Yeah, no. yeah, right, they're not going to give you. Yeah. They're not going to give us that. No, no. Oh, they're not going to. It's going to be the same thing, really. Because they're not our friend. I, I don't want to go to what is what is why would. Really, I'd be the same thing. I, I, I would the say the best one to go to would be not the last and not the first. Yeah. First one they're going to mess up and so get one in one polished okay. up. Now, do they? I mean, they have to. Don't they have to identify wetlands? I don't think they have to. I think they're asking us to do it. That's the problem. I think. No, I, 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 I think they go out and try and find the best route. You know, so it, because, or maybe because of the opposition to having to come in. So I think they're trying to not get, you can see this thing moving around a little it's bit. It's like moving the Titanic. They're, they're pretty much, yeah, that's set. They're, they're pretty much going to be set on a path. Now you can change it a little bit, but really it's going to be between that 20 foot area. Yes, but I, I, I know people no who work on for projects. So you know, yeah. They have to identify the wetlands, and they send out teams to identify the wetlands. That's just my point. Well, I, I think they, they, yeah, but they I still they go going out and surveying the areas. And, and, but they and still go through them, right? Yes, they do. Right. Yes, I understand that. Okay. I did, I, I no, yes, they do. <laughs> no. I didn't want anyone to be thinking that since they have identified them, that means anything. Oh, yeah. Well, okay now. You know, it's, it, if enough people say, no, this, is, this track doesn't work, yeah, they'll move it. But if you're the only town saying, "Hey, look, it's not going to work for us," they're going to say, "Well, how much? How much are you going to cost?" You know, and it's you know, it's a fees. it's a benefit. Right. It's they they weigh That's the benefit, the, the social benefit. What? Drive-in theater? No. no. That was long gone, right? I mean, unless it's being kept for a flea market. So I guess the, I feel like I the question is, by now. <laughs> do, do we care? Went for the one out in, like, I mean, they're going to go through it. That looks like wetland, right? It is, it's absolutely well, The way they would do that was they would dredge it all out, lay the pipe in the pool, all the way down. Right. Isn't it Everything going through right to this area right here? Yep. In Middleton? No. Yeah, uh, you're in almost yep. in Danvers. Oh, in Danvers? But that's uh, Linfield. They need it to may still be that. there, like the parking lot. Yeah. I know they use those parking lots for flea markets on the weekends, yeah. but so yeah. if it was operational, so what can we ask them for? I mean, my friends yeah. would have gone into the driveway. Rebecca, what do you think we should ask them for? How should we respond to this letter? <laughs> <laughs> um, did you, uh, did <laughs> well, how they propose to put, what they propose to put in, how they propose to put it in, what is the ro erosion sediment control? And this is a gas pipeline, right? So they, it's, it's so they, it's, do it's they put an access road all along it? Um, it's something like, I think they need 75 feet, but they dig up about 25 of it. And then they, I think they need, yeah, for the heavy equipment, they need something along the side there. I've 
see loaded uh, platforms too. Have you ever worked with that? I haven't, but I've heard of I've, it. I've seen yep. pictures of people who have done that. So that's on my radar. Um, those are actually some of the follow up requests. Try and make it to the meeting in February. Um, Are they do they're during the week, right? Do we know the dates? I thought it was the 28th. And it was on a Saturday, I thought. Oh, God. Because there's, these are open house public sure. meetings for everyone. I, I could be wrong. I emailed. Uh, okay. I could be thinking it's of something else. Because I have okay. a lot of emails <laughs> coming at me <laughs> right now. So. <laughs> okay, so January 27th, Milford, Mass. Berlin, Mass. Fitchburg, Mass. Ramish, New Hampshire. Winchester, New Hampshire. Greenfield, Mass. Leatherman, New York. Pittsfield, Mass. Farmington, Connecticut. New Scotland, New York. Andover, Mass. On February seventeenth. Is there another one in the area? And too? then is there, is there London, Derry, New Hampshire, and then Hudson, New Hampshire. So I oh, think it's February seventeenth. So is that the only one that's in the area? I thought. I yeah. thought there was February seventeenth. Andover, New Hampshire. Wyndham Hotel. 123 all Old River Road in Berlin. Oh, maybe they'll have food. In so there. that's, uh, <laughs> and it's they an open often house, do. and it's from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. I'd be happy to go. What day of the week is February 17th? I'll look know. that up. What, what day it's a it? Monday yeah, night, it's a Monday. 6 oh, to 8. I can do that. Okay. If you can, great. If I can go too, be happy to join you. But you said February 17th? February 17th. That's a Tuesday. Three Am I in the wrong year? I'm sorry. Seven, the seven sorry, seven I was seven in 2014. Seven February 17th is a Tuesday. Is a Tuesday. Oh, You're right. It's even better. Tuesday. Thanks. Okay. So I bet they want uh, which one's the worst? Okay, so are, th are there any more items to discuss? I have one small thing to bring up. Go ahead. Um, I have to be going to the commission at the end of the month because I will be moving out. Um, you can't be on the commission if you don't live in Reading anymore. Yeah, sorry, yeah. we're going to Move you, Terry. Yeah, okay. Rhode Island for a while and then heading for Colorado. Moving to Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, Sorry. we're going to miss you, and there's going to be vacancies on two boards in town this year. Um, Three. Three? Yeah, the Trails <laughs> Committee, too. Trails, Forest, and Commission. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so the next meeting's going to be your last. Yeah. All right. Some new members. Do you know if, if Will was going to come back? Or? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, do you know anybody? If anybody, you know, if anybody is interested in getting involved, um, give it a good pitch. <laughs> the guy at Pinedale, he'd be good with. Guy at Pinedale? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Change it from the inside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Terry, for... Oh, sure. It's been a, a great experience for me, too. I learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. Keep so it tight. Take these skills and go somewhere else and do some more work. Mm -hmm. Oh, in Colorado. Do a boulder. Yeah. I'm sure it's the whole county is probably just like that. Yeah. Thanks for your time and yeah, service. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, I, I guess there's one other last item I'm just remembering now. Uh, Rachel Baumgartner... Oh, that um, nature, oh, nature trail yeah. item. Um, any objections to her setting up little kiosks in Bear Meadow for a nature walk? Mm -hmm. No? Fine. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approving her project? No? Unanimous. Okay. Chuck, did you want to? There was another thing she wanted us to do um, on this agenda. So there were two. Do you have both? Uh, maybe in my email? No, it's on the agenda. I don't have the yes. No. Anybody else? Story walk. 
discussion and the nature literacy program. That's what we just. Which one did you do? There's two different things. We talked about the nature trail, not the literacy program. We, t we talked about story walk. Okay, so now you need to approve the nature literacy program. Okay, I move we approve the nature literacy program. Okay. What's that one? That doesn't involve anything on the land. It does have to be at the library itself? Or? Well, one of our requirements is they're using the Sierra cabin and there's more than, okay. they need the approval. There's more than like three or four people. Right. Now they need the approval and the permission to allow it to whatever, walk or go down. But well, it's just so a walk. Deal. That, that storybook thing is a walk, but what's the literacy program? The, the storybook thing is going to be a walk, I believe, to certain little posted right. kiosks yeah, that have yeah. yeah. parts of the book. Okay, that, that and part. So they kind of read a book along a walk. So what's the other part that you're talking about? What does that involve? So which one are you asking about? The literacy. The, the storybook walk near the Mysterio Cabin. Yeah, that one over there. I got that one. Mm -hmm. The other one I didn't know what we were approving, so I didn't know I didn't know if it was if it on conservation land. Is, is the other one on conservation land near the Reading Rifle Revolver? No, it's okay. all pretty much very close to the Mysterio Cabin. Okay. Just circle that small okay. area. Okay. I, I can figure out what else you want. We do the two separate walk things, both in Bear Valley. That's what I'm trying to figure out what it is. I At least I thought it just to be you know, the kids go to the library and learn about conservation. Well, the, the library is uh, it is under construction, so that's. I don't they have jazz band over there by the bed? Oh, I like no, that. It's surprising. Nice. It's surprising. Yeah, nice. Mm. It's better than mm. I thought it was going to be. Yeah, to my house. It's, <laughs> it's, it's not really that bad. I first heard that. Yeah, it's really the baby not that bad. The no. Yeah, floor, it's a know? big space. It is. Yeah, it is. It's not bad. And they have a couple extra rooms. They did a good job of writing down your they books. Have, well they have maybe storage rooms, rooms, but they have like they have the kids sit in some of the rooms. Oh, there's not. I think it's more like sections. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. they have it set up yeah. good so that like yeah. there's like a young adult section where then there's like a couple tables and there's some like tables right at the front where you can work. Yeah. Chuck, do you have a? Are both of these projects in Rachel? Yeah. So it looks like they talk about nature and then walk to oh there. Yeah. Our group is uh, the amount of two to 20 people, one adult, 33 children. Yep. And then they give some dates. This is what we typically would agree to. The difference this year is they're going to do, they're going to talk about nature and walk to Bear Meadow. The other one is going to be a display set up for people just to walk out there and, and check out. So they're putting in story like a storybook walk for people to go out and check out on their own. So you know about that one. Yeah. Right? They're about 40 feet apart. Uh, they're in a sequence telling a story. So. But is, is nature literacy through Reading Rec? And this, and this. Um, Children's yeah. library. Oh, okay. Okay. I move we approve. Second. Second. Other, other debate? Do you want to say them separate? you want to take two separate votes? We just did. We, we th that was the second vote, <laughs> right? I move we, we approve the nature's on? literacy. The, <laughs> yeah, the literacy thing. <laughs> so just trying to get it more confusing. <laughs> we voted on the thing with the well, lips, like the kiosk. And the kiosk. And this really could have been one approval. We wouldn't have known. No. Right. Anyways. I think we approved no matter what. <laughs> Any objections? As long as no. she's going to pick no. up the uh, no. storybooks afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's going to be really minimal disturbance in us. What's the story? Foster a stake in the ground? Nature. She actually goes through and <laughs> tells you exactly yeah. how I'm she's, I'm reading she's it. going to take these things in. Well, she asked me for some guidance before she submitted something. Well, this is the quiz. How deep are those things going? <laughs> Good enough? No. Barely four inches. Just Ooh. four to six inches. I thought it was six inches. Pretty small things, huh? Yeah. How are they going to fit? They're attached <laughs> to a one inch stake. <laughs> one width. Yeah. Pushed <laughs> into the ground. Okay. Four to six inches. Cool. So, how can you Go push a one it. inch stake four inches? <laughs> Each 
Page is faceted to the stake with industrial strength. Yeah, that's that's pretty good detail. Yeah. All right. I'm sure right. it'll be fine. The stakes are 40 feet apart, <laughs> unless a roots are in the way. <laughs> any other uh, comments? <laughs> any other any other agenda <laughs> items? Okay. Hearing none. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Um, oh. You did, okay. sorry, you did send s something about uh, MACC meeting in February? Yes. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you I should go to that. I that can't work. go. I, I knew well, about that. Yeah. February. It's on a Saturday. It's the 28th of February. Months. See, that's what I was thinking. And you should that's go, Terry, you should go to that, too. February 28th, that's hmm? what I had, 28 in my head. Oh, okay. That's why I had it in my oh, head. All right. Yeah. Yeah. What, is it? what is the meeting? I didn't go to It's the oh, annual yeah. environmental conference. Why didn't I? It, it oh, was, it, you sent oh. out an email, and it has four pages. I did send an email, but I'd like you to print it out, fill it out, and okay. here, it back to well, take, well, take, take this. I can't go. Remember, I can't go. I can't go. All right, thanks. As long as I'm still a member, as I, what I belong to. Why don't you do what you did last year? <laughs> yeah, I know. So if you do sign up, you can Since I'm retired, I don't have to worry about working overtime. Well, I, I think that if you know, it's pretty close to when you're gonna when you're gonna. I think it's like 20 days, 28 days. Yeah. So. I thought before I just think I might might not have been eligible if I was running. You're Friday you're still gonna be a member. You could. You, yeah. You could just access it yourself. I'm not sure what these things cost. Uh, I think they're like 100 bucks. But. 115. 115. Yeah, that's so there's a few new things. Um, on there and your your gas line project, which you yeah, know, yeah, I saw that was on that thing. Yeah. That's why I said, "Ooh, what are you doing today?" So and there's food. My gas I wanted to that. mention that there is lunch and it's that's pretty good actually. Wonder you're all so excited. <laughs> there's lunch. Free food. Yeah. They make you leave far too quickly with the lunch, but yeah, it's usually pretty good. And then there, you have to get down to the um, displays early so you can. Grab enough pencils and pens. Get, and get all the goodies. And, you know, like bags. Little rubber and stuff. duckies. Right. And yeah, that's our company had those. <laughs> okay. Which makes a lot of sense. Key rings and all that. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and you can buy, you can bring some cash or checks to buy a Vernal Pool Association t shirt, hat, and tote. Ooh. A real tennis shoe for each of you. So yeah, anyway. it's pretty good. And they're going to go over the ecological restoration. Um, what is it, 1024, the new section of the uh, Protection Act. So that might be very interesting for the Meat is there, too. Yeah. 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 Are you going to go? Yeah, I'm, I was planning. I, I had that date in my head. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, anything else? No? Nothing. Okay, motion to adjourn. Seconded? Second. All those in favor. All right. Not bad.